Hello, everybody. I'm going to do some shares here and get everybody invited. Hope everybody's doing good tonight. Hope they can hear me. Hey, I can hear you. Good. Good deal. I was hoping so. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hey, everyone. Hey, hey Sally. How's everyone doing? Hey, Tim. Good. Good. See, Tim, you're about as good at, at computers as we are. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I know, right? You fit right I, in. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I'm just happy my headphones working, man. Yeah. We are, too. Oh, that's okay. awesome. Yeah, I'm glad. <laughs> man, we got like a, a, almost 20 questions. All right. All right. That's yeah. awesome. And some of them I had to go back and I went back and double checked and luckily I did because there were some new questions on there. So. That's awesome. Because what I was going to do is finish that one we did last time because I didn't quite finish the whole file. So I'm going to finish that and then we can do the questions. That'll work out great. Cool. Oh, oh. And I wanted to call, uh, say something to Seek the Father that's on YouTube. He was, uh, he was complaining because the beep in my house. So I want you to know, last time you didn't hear no beep, bro. And this time you're not going to hear no beep because I fixed it. That's right. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm not the stereotypical black guy what anymore. Was it your fire alarm or your smoke detector? Yeah, the smoke detector. That's like a whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so funny. That that can be annoying though after a while. Oh no! Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> That's Crazy. funny. Hi, I got so used to it. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and when that starts, you oh, inevitably don't have a battery. That's always That's my awesome. luck. I do not have I a battery. For sure. <laughs> But you have a computer that's working. Yeah, that's great. Yes, we have Sally to thank that we're even on live tonight. Oh, uh, yeah, that's awesome. Not yeah, really. Thank you, Sally. <laughs> no, no problem. Hey, Marie. I'm glad it's up and running. <clears throat> Me too. I'm kind of giving everybody a minute to come in and. Oh sure. yeah. I never Always thought of that. that. Hi, Dorothy. Uh, Tracy says some people have high ceilings, so it's like you can't get to them. That's, That's true. true. Hi, Mark. Hi, Tracy. And I'm some afraid of heights. Some people are just short, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I'm afraid of heights too. Yeah, I'm six foot. I'm afraid yeah. of heights, y'all. <laughs> I'm terrified I'm, to fly. I, I'm, I'm five foot. I must be the shortest one here. I'm five eight. I know. I know oh, Bowen was tall. Elaine, you're so I'm short. I'm five eight too. I'm five foot tall. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll tell you what's what's coming up around the corner and stuff like that. I'll tell you what's going on down the road. No worries. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Tracy, you're five ten. You're tall. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, I'd laugh if y'all could see my setup tonight. Though I'll have to take a picture and show y'all afterwards. It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Dorothy's five four. I had a, I had a sister shorter than me, guys. Wow. She was four. She was four ten. Wow. Ooh. She was like yeah. pushing um, the boundary of what, yeah. what they would call um, damn. What do they call it? Uh, like dwarfism or something? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I have she, a cousin that I think is like four ten. Yeah. Not oh, quite five ten. I didn't have much choice though. My dad. I think my dad was five four and my mother was five foot. So. Oh, I wow. didn't have much choice. Yeah. Yeah. 
Give me one hey. second. I'm going to be sharing this. Hey. So I'm trying to get Dan and Danny and other people in here. Hey, Dorothy. Oh, nice. Five foot four there, Dorothy says. I'd, I'd take that, Dorothy, for, like, I'd give up my five foot for that. <laughs> when I was younger, I didn't want to be five eight. Now I'm really glad that I am. Oh, uh, I've never wanted to be short. Yeah, Although me people, too. I didn't like being that tall either, but I, now I'm glad. Where are you going? I'm yeah. Five I'm five eight. You're five eight, yeah. Yeah, Sally and I are the same height. We're twinsies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys are lucky. Tracy says she always wanted to be shorter. Can't even I did too, it. when I was younger. Yeah. I, I'm just happy when I, because I, I always wear shoes around the house because you might laugh at this, but the one inch that you get from your shoes, like the sole, makes such makes a difference when you're going up to the countertop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's true. I can see that. Yeah, when I take them off, it's like, what? <laughs> See, and I'm wishing I was taller because I'm only five. Yeah. You're five, you're five, you're five foot? foot? <laughs> yeah, I'm five and a half. So that, that's you're the same yeah, height yeah. as I Same as me. Yeah. Oh, I guess we'll get started here. Um, okay. Let's see. What I, did, what I did was I left off at um, like slide 22, and this was like, I think 30 slides so I'm just gonna cover the last of those slides from the last time and then we've got like 20 questions from YouTube which is great uh, that we're gonna go over uh, Tim's got those and uh, if anybody has any questions or anything you know, I'm, I'm not gonna be talking quite as long tonight but you know pretty good just a few minutes at the beginning and we can invite people up during some of it too I see. Um, one thing um, I think when we're when we need to really strongly question and examine w what we're following and why we're following it, and I think that hit me home really good because it's like when I started seeing this, I was really kind of nervous and scared because you spend your whole life, you know, everybody tells you the Old Testament deity is Father and that the Bible is one whole book and you're reading it and things are not making sense and you know you're not dumb I mean I've, I've got like nearly three college degrees so I know I'm not stupid you know and I'm sitting here going what is the deal here so I just started praying real hard for truth but these are some of the things you got to think about when you're reading these things in the Old Testament um, like when we look at um, Deuteronomy 21:18 If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son which will not obey the voice of the father or the voice of the mother um, when they have chastened him will he not hearken to them then shall father and his mother hold him on hold on him and bring him out to the elders of the city and unto the gate of the place and they shall say unto the elders of the city, This is our son. He's stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And all the men of the city shall stone him with stones that he be unalive. So shall thou put evil away from among you. And all Israel shall hear and fear. Okay. So, if, if you have a son that's stubborn and rebellious, instead of trying to work with them, trying to, to, you know, make things right, make them understand, and get them help, you're just going to go out there and unalive them with stones. And everybody's going to watch, and you could just be that cruel to do that. And I know sometimes, you know, children can make people awful upset, but it's like, Think about that. That's extreme. That's unaliving a human being just because they were stubborn or rebellious. Okay, so this is some questions I had here. Questions to examine what are you following? Could you stone your child at the wall if he becomes rebellious? Would you rip babies out of the womb 
if Yahweh told you to do it. Can you can you wipe out Amalek and Esau off the planet? I mean, we're told today by the rabbis all over YouTube, Amalek and Esau is Rome, Edom, um, all the Western countries. Can you do that? Uh, would you have slaves and drive a, a nail through their ear and all? Could you be that cruel as to do that to somebody? Um, would you participate in wiping out nations and taking everything they own? Um, could you kill all the firstborns or unalive all the first did in Israel, um, in Egypt, if Yahweh asked you to? Uh, could you wipe out a person's livestock, destroy their crops, uh, give them plagues, um, like the Israelites in Egypt did when Yahweh asked them to? If you answer to any of these questions, do you really believe is no? If your answer to all these questions is no, or to any one of them, do you really believe that Yahweh is your God? Do you really want to follow Yahweh in the Torah if that's, if that's the case, if these are the things? And remember, he says, I don't change. I mean, over and over, he said, I don't change. And Joshua t said, um, he told the people, he said, Yahweh is a jealous and wrathful God, and he will not forgive your sins. You will not be able to please him. If he's not going to forgive your sins, and he's not going to do anything on that account, what does that mean, too? I think it was like two, two million that came out of Egypt of a mixed multitude and that means all different kinds of people from all different nations. And guess how many made it into the promised land? Two. Two went into the promised land. What does that tell us? I mean, I just have to logically think about this. Logos, <laughs> which is the word they say in John 1.1, 1, 1, means the spoken word that's logical. Rima, if they wanted to say the word of God like they have in the Septuagint, they would have said Rima, not Logos. But John wrote Logos. Logos means logic. He gave us this brain for us to think. Father loves us. He doesn't want us to be deceived. And everybody says, oh, there's so many deceptions and so many hoops. How could Father ever do that to us? He didn't. He He's not doing anything. We just have to think logically with the brain he gave us. Once we do, everything becomes very simplified. We see that the father that Jesus taught was kind, loving, wished that nobody would perish. Um, he was good, and in him was no evil at all. He did not dwell in thick darkness like Yahweh. Um, he loved everybody. He sent his only son so that whoever would believe in him um, wouldn't perish. He promises eternal life. And Yahweh promises dust to dust you go. And that's it. From the dust you came and from the dust you'll go. So there's just no way to make these two deities the same one. And I don't know. I, a lot of my friends have thrown the Bible out over the years because of seeing the deceptions like Paul. Seeing everything that I've shown and I don't want anybody to do that because those words that Jesus spoke to us, and sure, they've been corrupted a little bit, but they're like a broken box of crayons. They still color. And um, what we need to do is take them to heart, study them out, look at these old manuscripts we got, try to figure out exactly what he did say to us, because a lot of times we'll find what he said is absolute truth. It's like... Um, they've got down there, he didn't come to cast out peace, but to, I mean, to cast out the peace, but to cast, let's see, I got that backwards, I'm sorry, I got tongue-tied. He didn't come to cast out the sword, but to cast out peace. It's completely distorted. When you look at the Greek, he said he didn't come to cast out peace, but to cast out the sword. And it is very, you don't even have to be able to read Greek, if you just line it up with an interlinary, and look at the words, you can tell what I'm saying is true. That's one of the most clear verses I know 
for showing somebody what's been what's happened to us but we're not too late we're at the very end times I think but we're not too late to see the truth and once we see it we just have to do everything we can in our power to show it to everybody that we can and no matter what obstacles as everybody knows we're jumping through we've been jumping through we just have to keep going with it okay okay um this is a clear another very 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 clear example and I've got my little movie Jesus here and it says help them see father you're not Yahweh and this is something we you know we need to really really think about when you look at Leviticus 21 and Yahweh spoke to Moshe saying speak to Aaron saying no man of your offspring throughout their generations who has any defect um, is to draw near um, to bring the bread to Elohim for any man who has a defect is not to draw near a, a man blind or one that is uh, lame or one that is disfigured or deformed a man who has a broken foot or a broken hand or a hunchback or a dwarf or a man who has a defect in his eye eczema or a scab on his skin or a eunuch no man among the offspring of Aaron the priest who has a defect is to come near to bring the offering made by fire to, to Yahweh if he has a defect he does not come near bring the bread to his Elohim or to his God um, he does he does eat the bread of the Elohim both the most set apart and the set apart and only he does not go near the veil or approach the slaughter place because he has a defect lest he profane my set apart place for I am Yahweh who sets them apart okay now how many times did he say defect 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 and and all these bad things it's like I don't know of a single one of us that might not have some eczema rash um, have broken a bone uh, have some kind of genetic problem like um, I was born with a hole in my heart and defective lung and end up having to have an open chest surgery and I have Job syndrome which is a genetic disorder um, you know I've broken my foot my neck uh, my right my left arm um, my ankle um, God it just goes on and on and on but just because you have a defect or you've got something wrong with you which 99% of us do you're not to draw near to him okay now let's flip that over and look at what Jesus has done he said the large crowds this is Matthew 15 and I'm 7 15 and 17 19 and 21 uh, then the large crowds come uh, to him bringing with them the lame the blind the cripple the mute and many others and they laid them at his feet and healed them then Jesus rebuked the demon in Matthew 17 and it came out of him and then the boy was healed at that moment and then in Matthew 19 a large crowd followed him and he healed them and then in Matthew 21 the blind and the lame came to him in the temple courts and he healed them this is not the same deity So tiny, this is going to be hard to read, but that's okay. I'm going to blow it up for a minute. Okay. Yeah, I won't be able to see all of it, but I'm going to, just so I can tell you. Matthew nine thirteen. But going and learn what it is, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous ones, but sinners to repent. Okay. 
here are a bunch of the sacrifices that had to be made. Two lambs every day, one in the morning and one in the evening. Two lambs every Saturday. Two bulls and one ram and seven lambs on the first day of every month. One bull, one lamb, and six lambs on the new moon. Two bulls, one lamb, um, no, one ram and seven lambs. Uh, one bull, two rams, nine lambs, and a goat 50 days after the harvest. I mean, this list goes on and on and on. It's like, uh, to obey the Old Testament deity, you must unalive a hundred, I mean, a thousand, three hundred, and sixty-seven animals every year. That's a lot of animals. Okay. And also, it's like, um... On the Sabbath thing, it's like, um, Jesus said his father was still working in John five seventeen, And he told them, my father is working until now, and I'm working too. Okay, in Exodus 20, uh, for six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea as all it is in them. And he rested on the seventh day, therefore... Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy, and it is a sign between me and the Israelites forever. For six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And it's like everybody that is believes in him is supposed to keep that seventh day. So, and that's literally in one of the um, books. I think it's Deuteronomy. It says it'll be a sign between your forehead and on your hand. And I think it is the 666 because Yahweh literally in Greek is pi, and which is a numerical value of 666. Hang on that boy. We'll get you up in just a few minutes. Okay. All right. And Jesus told us he was the good shepherd in John ten eleven. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me. But then when we look, we go to Zechariah, and, um, right up since it, and he always said to me, throw it to the potter. The splendid price at which she valued me, and I took the thirty pieces of silver and I threw it, threw them into the house of Yahweh for the potter. Uh, then I cut into my other staff unity to break the brother, brotherhood between Judea and Israel. And Yahweh said to me, "Take again the implements of a foolish shepherd, for look, I am raising up a shepherd in the land who does not visit those straying." nor seek the young, nor heal those that are broken, nor feed those that still stand, but he does not eat the flesh of the fat and tear off the hooves. Woe to the worthless shepherd forsaking the flock. Let the sword be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall wither, and his right eye shall be utterly dimmed. So he literally says he's going to send a horrible shepherd to break everybody apart. And this is the final slide in this, and it's like, you have to be able to see it. It's like, um, he literally says that Moses is the accuser, which specifically, when you say this word in Greek, it's um, categorous. It means specifically the Satan, like the head, head honcho. And it says, do not think that I accuse you to the Father, your accuser is Moses, the one that you trust. So he's saying you're trusting the wrong thing. And I hope this completed this out for y'all because I really, when I got to looking at what we left off, I didn't like it. I wanted to cover that last bit because I thought it was very important. But um, I hope that helps everybody see even further.
what I've been trying to show y'all. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, I think it's good. I think um, some things that, that comes to mind, especially early in your presentation, how Yahweh tries to force people to love him, basically. You know, like um, when he talks about stoning the children for being rebellious. Yeah. <laughs> Like you're gonna, you can't see. That's the difference between the father, because the father don't force you to do anything. He wants you to choose him, and that's free will, you know, and to choose someone. I say that all the time. So your children should also choose to be good as well. You can't force them, you know. Right. You can do your best and work with them, reason with them, but to unalive them and to to repay evil with evil, which Jesus said not to do. You know, it's just too far. Yeah, Yahweh's just jealous, and he, so he require all these things to to know that you still love him, you know, like with the circumcisions and the, you know, it's just wear these kind of clothes, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's just too much. No yeah, and that, really. that that is literally <laughs> mutilation when you think about it. I know a lot of ladies today that. If a man say, I don't even want you to go showing your body and wearing this kind of clothes or this kind of clothes, they're like, who are you talking to? But then they go serve Yahweh, who tell you <laughs> to wear tassels and you know what I'm saying? It's just silly. Yeah, those, those tassels, they do. It's like it's knotted so many times and everything. And if you look in a witchcraft, that's, a, that's what they call a witch's knot. And it's supposed to help you bring things about by the number of times you knot your tassels and stuff. They wear them, too. So it's mysticism, basically. Yeah, it's mysticism. It's, it's like a Kabbalah thing. Yeah. Yeah, knit magic, Tracy. And where's um, where's a Sandwich in the comments? I really wanted to talk to him. Yeah, no. Sandwich, if you're still there, come up, brother. And uh, there was one more. That boy? Yeah. Let me see if I see them in the... I don't see either one of them anymore, unfortunately. Yeah, I think they left already. I think Man, so. You didn't even talk talk for that long. Wait, that boy... No, I, see I that just went right through. Here. Yeah, I just invited him. Okay, cool. He come back. And... Come on, Sandwich, where are you? Yeah, I don't see Sandwich. Danny is... Look who it is. Mother loving Danny Matheson. No, I'm just kidding. What's up, Danny? I say that to Danny all the time. That's my way of greeting him. So that's your coworker? Yes. Yeah. Not not the trouble that not Dan. Not the one I needed people to pray for me for every time. <laughs> 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 oh man. I love you, Dan. He oh, so he listened to the last show and he's like, Man, I listened to it three times, man. I it was so good. And I he was like, I thought it was gonna be so like so, you know, uh chaotic and this and that and i'm like no bro there's structure you know oh that's awesome is, is that boy caught in getting up because i notice that they're in but i don't see them that boy it says they're up there but i don't see them well they were they're gone now so yeah i saw him for a second he was yeah, in the request on. and then i but i didn't accept it because i was waiting for her to finish well, yeah, but I just accepted it. Gulenov just accepted it, and and his name act or her name actually went up to the panel, and then they didn't show up. So I don't know what happened. Maybe hmm. they left by now. I don't know. Well, if anyone Danny, else has questions, though, Mona, yeah, I know Danny Mona might Danny. not want to. If you want to, though, today could be the day, brother. And uh, David, stop I don't think I've seen you before. Maybe you, if you have questions, at least. What's up, Bookum? <clears throat> But um, what, another thing I wanted to bring up is that people don't know what they're worshiping. You know, when Sandwich is here, you know, he yeah. was kind of sounding almost offended in the comments. And I'm like, I, you know, if he was just patient, <laughs> right. I'd be able to talk to him. But he don't know what he's worshiping. I think people get so caught up in just in worshiping God the way people get so caught up in just having a boyfriend. You know, or, you know what I'm saying? And then you mess around and you don't know who you married, you know, and they don't know who they're serving. Indoctrination. 
Yeah, it's like you got to be careful about these things. Get to know him at least. <laughs> Find out what he's about. Look at his fruits. Look at his character. Yeah, when you present it, if they're actually listening, you know, I don't know when they come in if they're actually listening. It's like pretty crystal clear when when you're doing the comparisons between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And oh, I know that to me, that to me just is like, when you see that, you can't unsee it, you know. But you, you can't. I mean, it's crystal clear. You know, and how, how we all read the Bible for so long growing up, and we didn't see it either until now, so. Uh, Danny's here right now, right? And um, I never really, like, showed Danny scripture. I just kind of reason with Danny sometimes, like, and I can't help it. You know, we just be chilling at work. And, but um, do we have the Joshua 24? Um, like, do you have that slide? Available uh, artists. Oh, the one I I just rattled that off off the top of my head. Um, no, I don't have that one ready. You don't have it with me. I just I can pull these. it up though. On the okay. Button. I just wanted to you know make it make it visible for him so like you know he knows that we're not twisting it. To, oh yeah. To mean something, you know what I'm saying. <clears throat> but I just want to at least give you a clear a clear cut example of why we don't follow this guy, Danny. You know, and I, I think Danny already understands it, though. Honestly, you know, he made some comments, and I think he gets it. I'm trying to remember what verse it is. It's uh, 24, I want to say 19. Uh, you got it. Um, it's, and Joshua said unto the people, oh, I don't know <clears throat> that where y'all can see it yet. There we go. I think that's good enough. Okay. <laughs> and Joshua said unto the people, Ye cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. Um, and if you forsake him, Yahweh or the Lord and serve strange gods, he will turn and do hurt and consume you. And after that, he hath done you good. And the people said, nay, we will serve the Lord. So they made the decision, even though he was saying that. And then Joshua goes on to tell him, he said um, unto the people, you are a witness against yourselves mm -hmm. that you have chosen Yahweh to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. So they chose him, even though they knew that he was not going to forgive their sins or do, do anything for them. That's just so crazy. And it was all about him being worshipped. And Danny, when he speak about those other gods, about if you serve those other gods, you know, it talk, it, Satan's kingdom is divided. And those other gods are the ones that fell with them. But they want worship too, and they slept with the woman, and they got children. You know what I'm saying? And But Yahweh wants the world to worship him. He wants to be the only one to be worshipped. And and that's what we see today that he's been successful with Allah actually being Yahweh upside down. You know, if you squeeze it together and you'll see it, it's super clear. There's pictures of it already on just Google. You know. But so the Jews, the Muslims, the Christians, and every every sect of those are all worshiping the same deity. The whole he's brought the world together to worship him successfully and they all worship this jealous uh god that don't forgive sins the whole world and that's the reason why jesus said straight is the is the gate and narrow is the road that lead to life yeah i think so and 
you know, that word like for Yahweh is um, Hava, and then it's got a Yod on the front. It's Yod Hey Vahe, and it's like that Hava literally means ruin or destroy. And when you take a Yod and put it in front of a, a, a word like that, it makes it into a verb, and it means he will destroy. Because mm -hmm. Yod is he will as a prefix. So as a compound word, it would mean he will destroy. And then Abram Publishing said as a noun, it can mean destruction. So the exact word that Jesus used, he said many will go to destruction. You know, the oh, wide is the path to destruction. Yep, yep. It's a destination and a person the same way life is a destination and a person. Artist, I did want to comment that what you said benefit was so good and so crystal clear that if somebody wouldn't understand that it's because they're just not really listening, they're just wanting to answer and not listen to what you have to say. Right. Because the same examples that you were using, I was just amazed that you started speaking about that because those are the same things that I was using today with somebody else on a video I made. Using like children as an example, like their own children, to see how they react to it, because then, you know, they would see that that is a thing to do with things. Yeah. If you make it relatable, it's a lot easier. Uh, I think um, I think she's on mute. I don't know if she knows her voice went out or if I just can't hear it. Was it just me? Sorry, I had a phone call. Can you hear me now? Yeah, oh, we hear you. That was me. Sorry, I'm going on mute. <laughs> oh, no, I, I was just agreeing with artists, like, you know, what she presented. Because, well, you know, when you present that to others and you, you know, you talk to them about, you know, oh, what if, you know, your child and you put those things in perspective, they will think about it. Even though they're rejected, they will think about it later on. When I started doing that, it, it made it, it drove it home to me. It was like, well, you know, what if that was my child and, and I was in that situation? Would I, could I really do that? And I've asked people on the lives before, could you do that, you know, to your own child? And they're like, well, if if God told me to, and I'm like, what? No. You know, <laughs> it's like I don't, believe that. I don't believe they would because, like me, that's the way I would think about it. When I started to think about that stuff, I'm just like, there is no way. I mean, the 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 love of a mother when you think about it and you ask these questions to them, there's just there's just no way. It, and it, you can tell you can tell that when you bring these things to people they do think about it because you can tell they kind of hesitate, you know, because they know in their heart yeah. that is wrong, but they're just scared. Oh, I'm going to commit blasphemy if I uh, question the Bible or question God, because that's what the church teaches. They indoctrinate you to, to feel that, oh, you can't question the Bible. Oh, you can't question God. You got to just accept it because that's just how he made it. And that's the problem. But I know that a lot of Christians do question that, but they're just scared to come out with the truth. Like, you know, what they're questioning. Yeah, their, their like, words yeah. might not match what their actions are eventually, you know, if they had to go and do it, they might be able to say it, but right. you know, their, oh, yeah. word, their words might not match their actions. They probably wouldn't be able to do it. I know I wouldn't be able to do it. Oh, for sure. Because I remember I asked somebody, I was like, would you unalive your, you know, your child if, you know, and I was asking questions like that. And they said, oh, it depends because God said, you know, and, and once they said that, I'm like, there's no way. You know what you should do, Marie? So trap them first. Don't even bring up the subject first. Just walk into work that day or something and just be like, I guess like maybe 30 minutes in and just go to him and be like, hey, by the way, let me ask you something. Would you do this to your kid if he disobeyed you or if you made an oath and then, you know, whatever? And then when they say no, obviously because they they guard to be down, right? Mm -hmm. They'll be they'll be clear about it and thinking about it unbiasedly. And then you're like, well, you know, Yahweh did that. You, 
you know? And then they'd be like, oh, oh, and they can't say anything. You know, you yeah. already took away that exit. Yeah, well, the, the funny part, I'm, you mentioned that that's funny because when I was talking to that person, I didn't bring it up first. I was actually asking them question about correction when it came to the children. And I was telling this person, okay, um, because of all the whole abortion thing going on, that's why the subject came. And I was explaining to this person, okay, you know, if my son is being so disobedient and he's being so stubborn, am I gonna, am I gonna put his hands on a on a stove to teach him a lesson? You know, like, are you gonna actually put your children's hands over fire to teach him a lesson? They're like, oh no, I wouldn't do that. I'm like, I know that sounds messed up, right? So would you, um, would you, you know, out of anger because they're just so stubborn, they don't listen. Would you end up just analyzing them? They're like, of course not. And then, like you said, when you bring it after, it does make a difference because that's exactly on one of the situations that had to do it that way. Because, you know, they don't have anything else in mind. Like you said, it's, you know, I'm biased and it's, when you bring the scripture, they're like, oh, well, I got to study that because I don't think that's the interpretation. When it's literally so clear in the scriptures that that's what it's saying. Like they excuse the evil. It's just, it's mind blowing. Yeah. That's the thing you show them like five other examples and then they'll get to 20 examples and they're like, God ah, dang, you know. But hopefully they go that far in the research, you know. Right. Yeah, because they always say, oh, well, I was back then, and this is not enough, and, you know, and then I bring this I hate up. hearing that. I know. That me too. was back then. What are you talking about? You're still serving them. Right, and they're like, oh, well, <laughs> there were sinners, and, and, and the Israelites were stubborn. I'm like, like, we haven't? We're not, no, you know what I mean? So it's, it's just, it's crazy when they bring that up. Because, Sally, you know, I can't, Oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, Sally, did you want to say, because it's it like she unmuted, and I think she can't get a word uh, in. No, I was just going to say, I think, you know, the, the times that I've been trying to talk to people, that is exactly it. Like, people are so afraid to go against or to question anything that is written, and they think that they're blasphemy. And, like, that's what people have told me when I try to share this information, you know. And I, I think what people are, people are so afraid that they're denying Jesus by even looking at this. You know, like, I have a friend specifically who doesn't want... She doesn't, she just literally told me to stop. Like, I don't, I don't need, I, I know everything I need to know, Sally. I don't need to know anymore. I, 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 you know, I know Jesus died. He went on the cross. He shed, I'm covered in his blood, you know, kind of the stuff that we've been talking about. Gross. You know, they're just so afraid to hear anything different than the indoctrination, you know. And that, that's the biggest challenge is to get people to listen long enough to be able to show them that we can show this with scripture. This isn't just something that we're, you know, Unfortunately, making. we always got to keep playing their game. And the game yeah. these days is short attention span. Yeah, that's so true. you got to hit yeah. them with these quick tidbits that send them home. You know what I'm saying? With something to think about. And then hopefully they'll come back. You know, we're fishing yep. out here. Yep. Yep. Did anybody want to come up before I get into the questions? We got freaking 20 of them, I think, so. That's wild. <laughs> I know, right? Look what that's we got good. ourselves into. That's good, though. Yeah, that is good. Questions are good. Always. Well, unless they're like dance questions where they're just there just to be a contrarian, you know. <laughs> freaking yeah, Tracy, time. that's why I keep going back to the two fathers because I want to. I want people to see, you know, that part, because once you see that, then you can see the other a lot easier. <sighs> mm -hmm. It's crazy because our main message is about Jesus being Barabbas, right? Or Jesus Barabbas being the real son of the father. But then we spe spend most of our time talking about Yahweh because that's the key to show them the difference between the, the father and Yahweh. <laughs> But um, I guess I can get into the questions if everybody's cool with that. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Uh, we'll start with 
Nikki Abba Daughter 2237. It used to be Nikki Miranda, but I messed her name up. All right. <laughs> so uh, she said, while Jesus was being tempted by the evil one, the evil one said, this has been given to me. So her question is, who gave it to him? Which Jesus was there? And was temptation part of the payment? I think that that had to be um, the JC one and the Christ one. Because um, it says in the New Testament that God tempts no one, you know, but then it had to be Yahweh doing the tempting because when you look at Psalms, he says, all the world is mine and everything in it. He even says, well, what temple would you build for me? I, everything belongs to me anyway, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think that that was probably him. And then when you actually look at what that word for the dove, you know, he he was baptized and that dove comes down and um, it said entered him in bodily form. Well, that that dove is called a pistera in Greek and pistera is the um, the essence of Asherah and, and Yahweh, according to other ancient, you know, writings outside the Bible. And I thought that was interesting, too, because um, we're never told what that word pistera meant back then, but that's what it meant in the first century, was a dove that was uh, like the, um, almost like the animal essence of um, Asherah. And Asherah, in a lot of the ancient writings, like the Steely Dan and stuff, is Yahweh's cohort or his partner. And then sometimes they said it could mean both of them together when you say Pistera. Yeah, so um, I also believe it was JC. Um, was temptation part of the payment? Um, I don't I don't think so. I mean, because I mean, I'm looking at it from the perspective that Yahweh is doing it, like you said, artists. So. And he also quotes Yahweh, you know, when he says, he keeps quoting scripture, um, you know, isn't it written that man mm -hmm. shall not live by uh, bread alone, but by the word of God, you know. So he's like, he's being tested, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's quoting the Old Testament stuff also. To make sure that he's a, a good spot, spotless, blameless um, sacrifice. Right. Like his lamb, right? Because that's what JC was supposed to be. So, um... And then to her last question, who gave it to him? Who gave Yahweh the world to to offer? I don't think anyone gave it to him. In fact, in Genesis 127, it says, And life created man in his image. In the image of life he created him, male and female, he created them. And life blessed them, and life said to them, Be fruitful and increase, and fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, and over all creeping creatures of the earth. And life said, see, I have given you every plant. So he's he's given them the rule. He said, I've given you, give, give every plant that you'll see, which is on the face of all the earth and every tree, right? And to every beast. You see what I'm saying? So they have domain, dominion. It was given to Adam and Eve. Um, Satan is a thief or Yahweh is a thief and a liar. He stole it. It wasn't given to him. He took it. And yeah, you also got those other places where it's it's considered his inheritance too from the most high. You know. And he said he hated his inheritance. Mm. So he didn't even like it, you know. Maybe, that, maybe what Chris would say is that his daddy stole it and then gave it to him. Right. That's El, true. El <laughs> yep. So but yeah, it was stolen though to begin with, I believe. That's what I think. And that's just going by the Old Testament text, but it's like Jesus had said us, you know, when he was talking to the Jews in John 8, he says, uh, you're of your father. He was an unaliver and a liar from the beginning, and that means from Genesis. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that, I was like, a light bulb just went off. Oh, my gosh. And then I got to thinking about the parable of the tree of good and evil, you know, and how, uh-oh. Going in sleep mode on the computer, okay. Um, and um, how he said a good tree couldn't produce evil, and you know, and it's like, how could you have a tree that's producing both good and evil knowledge then? You know, so a lot of it makes sense what he was saying. 
and he said he was going to uncover things that had been hidden since the foundation of the world. You know. Hmm. That, that's a that's a heavy comment then, because basically you're saying this there's something we still don't know from Genesis, which I think we all know we don't know. <laughs> exactly I think John one one is the real Genesis. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah. I know people are like, wow, I never thought of that. But I do think that it's like, it makes I, sense to me. It matches Genesis 1 to me. Yep. So the next question is from Watchful Warrior 8180. Unless anyone else on the panel had a, uh, had any thoughts and comments. I don't moved on too fast. Going once. Nope. You're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> 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 you covered funny. it all now. So, Watchful Warrior 8180, if Revelation happened before Genesis, how are we supposed to read it? Uh, I, <laughs> does anybody uh, here think Revelation happened before Genesis? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, if he means yeah. Revelation 12. Oh. Is that what he's talking about? Yeah, when well, it's the, talk about the dragon falls out of heaven? Isn't that what, what you think, Galena, with the, that uh, Revelation was first, or? I think Revelation 12 was first, like it revisited the past. I do too. And it's like, you know, Isaiah says he's telling the end from the beginning of things not yet done, which is a weird statement, you know, when you think about it. Oh, Tracy just said something very interesting. Revelation could be the dash between Gen uh, Genesis 1 1 and 1 2. And, but yeah, that's what that's I think the, I know she, the separation of light and the darkness is what I think Revelation 12 is. Yeah, when they get cast out. <clears throat> well, you know, Therion is the beast in Revelation. is is called Therion. Okay, when you look at Genesis 1-1, one, one, um, when it says he created the beast, when you look at the Greek Septuagint, the word is Therion. It's the same as Revelation. So it's it's it does look kind of line up in a, a lot of ways. And they found a copy of an old manuscript... And Revelation was written on the back right after Exodus. I thought that was interesting, too. And do you believe Exodus was written after the New Testament? Because I think you said something like the Old Testament was written after the New. I have a theory on that. I haven't been able to prove it. But um, I, it's like um, since the oldest manuscripts we have are of the New Testament, not the Old Testament, it would make sense, mm. you know, to me. And everybody's going to come, they're going to say, oh, she's wrong on that because of the Dead Sea Scrolls. But it's like, I think that the Dead Sea Scrolls is a great Indiana Jones movie that was played for us, you know, as, yeah. as a reality. Because when you look at that place where they found those things, it's like scaling a mountain of jagged rock. There's no food for any sheep to be eating. Uh, and it's like, what would they be doing out there with their flock at, in that barren place with no water and no food and and no eyes and no life oh you make it right. all eyes yeah <laughs> why everybody that got some kind of some kind of crazy story always don't have any witnesses it's always where no one can see it you know what i'm saying it's just you got uh, professor hopsy too that was like over the um that famous he was the, the authority on the second temple period and he had written in 1949 in the New York Times that he thought they were a hoax. Then they sold a bunch of them to the Bible Museum in New York, and they were proven to be a hoax. And that was Kip, and you see him on uh, YouTube all the time talking. And he's the one that discovered that those were were fraudulent. And he's a, he's a major scholar, so it's hmm. very interesting. <laughs> Yeah, the paper and the ink doesn't line up either to match the time period which they say that they, they were written. It's on the wrong parchment. That's a good point right there, Nathan. Um, I guess we're going to move on to uh, the next question. The way... Wait, hold on. Okay, yeah, okay, we did answer this question. So the way of Hakadesh. Get ready, guys. I think this guy's against us, right? Do we believe... Oh, wait, no, I might be wrong. I'm sorry. Do we believe evil should be allowed to go unpunished in this world? Nope, I'm right. 
<laughs> um, he has a couple of questions. So I guess um, if you, should I ask all of them or should we just answer one one at a time? I guess just one at a time. And what is he wanting to know about the evil? Should it go unpunished? Do we, yeah. Do we believe it should go unpunished in this world? No. <laughs> <laughs> so there are consequences. He's asking, there, yeah. Yeah. And there is consequences. Yeah. Uh he's asking because, you know, Yahweh punishes. He spanks his uh, kids, but he does worse he, than spank them. He does, but what what did what did our father say? He said repent, go and sin no more. So, you know. Um and, I don't think we can condone the evil that's in the world. I mean, look at what's going on with Hollywood, you know, in Hollywood and the children and everything. Do we condone that? No. We don't know what their punishment's going to be. But I don't I don't I don't think it should go unpunished. That's just my opinion. No, that's good. Artists? I don't th I don't think so either. I think that, you know, that's why, you know, we have systems in place for people who do criminal acts you know i mean they're they're not run well <laughs> like our uh, justice system isn't run well but i think that it's good to have them in place um sometimes the punishments don't fit the crimes in anymore like they they're misplaced like if you do something wrong to a child you'll get a slap in the hand but you know if you unalive somebody you'll be released it, or no, the, quite, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it's the, the punishment doesn't fit the the crimes that they do. Um, but at the same time, I don't believe that we are to, like, I would, I don't really know if I believe in the death penalty because that's not our, I don't believe that's our place to judge in that way. But there, yeah. you know, you do have to have some rules. Yeah. So. And I, I, I agree with that. And it's like, it's like father doesn't cause anybody to 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 go under bad under anything bad people choose it it's like they can choose the light or they can choose the dark and most of the time people will choose the darkness for some reason they're drawn into that dark world of where things are not right and then they they have chosen their own consequences by their actions not it's not something that father's doing to them, you know. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I agree. Um, and we should have, I mean, I don't like, I don't think things should go unpunished. But then again, I don't think that my definition of good and evil should be the end all be all. I think father's definition of good and evil is the end all be all. And he said, don't repay evil with evil. Right. Okay. So the truth is we're living in a world where evil exists, where father's world is a place where evil doesn't exist. That's the ideal world. That's the world that was created. A, a, a world where in Genesis, he said everything was good after he was done making it. Everything was good. Uh, and then, so anything that was evil was cast from that perfect world. Now we are in an imperfect world. You see what I'm saying? Right. So, so to to try to blame the philosophy of punishment, you know, on on father, I don't think that um, it is. What's the word I'm looking for? It's non applicable. You know what I'm saying? Things, you know, things have to happen in this world because this is where we live in. You know, it's in the world of good and That's evil. Right. So we have to suppress yeah. evil as much as we can while we live in here. Uh, in a perfect world, it wouldn't be needed. It wouldn't be necessary. You know, just yeah, like divorce wouldn't be necessary. Say, yeah, a judge wouldn't be necessary. Yeah. A jail wouldn't be right, necessary. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. In a, in a world I think they want no us to admit that the ahead. Bible, when the Bible says that we that we don't we shouldn't have to, you know, have jails and this and that here. But it's not the Father's world, and it's not run the same. So in this world, we definitely have to have systems set up to. Mm -hmm. Um, you know what I mean? Like, that's why I specified when he said in this world, and I hope that he yeah, was yeah. specifying it himself too, because I'm answering it like that in this world, uh, yeah, it shouldn't go unpunished. 
I don't think that I should be the one that's doing the punishing though. Like to, you know, I'm not the Avenger. Exactly. And yeah, yeah I get that too. So uh, he also asked, how can a father be just if he doesn't punish evil? And I can answer that real quick and then you guys can after, but I think that uh, he will be, you will have reason to accuse him if he did repay evil with evil. He already knew, he already knows this. That's why he's just saying, don't repay evil with evil, turn the other cheek. If they, if they take your cloak, give him another. You know what I'm saying? Because he knows repaying evil with evil actually means that he can be accused too. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's not what good is. He, his definition of good is no evil at all, not even repaying it. So I think he's just by not repaying evil with evil. And that's the reason why Yahweh, um, who I believe your father may be, way of Hakkadesh going by your name and your questions and you know, your stance. Uh, <laughs> your dad judges. It's your daddy's job, not my dad's. Yeah. That's that's a very good answer. Huh? Well, if everyone agree with that, we'll move on to his other question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was good, Tim. Uh -huh. What's the next question? Uh, same guy. He says Genesis seventeen one and Deuteronomy eighteen thirteen. This is a reference that he's bringing to this question. But he says, shouldn't we be perfect, like Jesus said? So I, I guess I should read Genesis seventeen one real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, my answer is the same: that your idea of perfect is different. The Father's idea of perfect is not to repay evil with evil, uh, and even what? and to even oh, if you mess up, no. I'm sorry, I got you. But even if you mess up, to be forgiven, to forgive others, their transgressions, forgive your brothers, your sister, your neighbor. And that is his idea of perfect. Therefore, there's room for mistakes. And, and even if someone makes a mistake, there is no conflict happening because we're forgiving. We're always forgiven. But go ahead, Marie. I'm sorry. Oh, no. You said what I was going to say. Like the verse that says, be perfect like the heavenly father mm -hmm. everything that jesus said before that it links to the perfection of father that is the perfection of father which you were just explaining man we got to find that verse i want to read it now since you said that here's 17 one. Seven. Oh, you talking about the old testament or the new testament no no 17 we could do 17 one because that's what his, his question mm -hmm. was referring to but mm -hmm. if marie finds the other one while we're doing this we'll go to it um, this one says, and when Abram was 90 years old and nine, uh, Yahweh appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. And I'll make a covenant between me and you, it goes on to say. Yeah. So it's just reinforcing his question on being perfect. Deuteronomy 18, 13, sure is going to be similar. Let me see. 18, 13. Yeah, so remember, Yahweh just got done saying, be perfect. And his idea of perfect is dashing kids against stones, you know, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. To me, that's not perfect. Just off face value, before I even know the Father. But to the Father, uh, it's not per he, it's, that's not perfect. And what I find interesting is the Almighty, the word for the Almighty there is Shaddai. And Shaddai is can also mean a demon, and um, it can mean to destroy, to devastate, to um, be a despoiler, uh, utterly ruined, violently destroy as a verb. But Shaddai, and because Shaddai is a singular for Shadim, and any any rabbi will tell you Shadim means the demons. So it was actually the demon that showed up to Abram in that verse, according to the Hebrew. Yeah, see, I always say that the word God means death, and a death or a God is a fallen, is something that's opposite life now, you know. And life and the, the real angels that's in heaven, those are life and light beings. But Marie, I know you wanted to say something. Deuteronomy eighteen thirteen says, be perfect before the Father, your God. Or I'm not the father, I'm sorry. Be perfect before Yahweh, your God. So 
But go ahead, Marie. What did you want to say about Matthew? No, you pretty summed it up. I was just going to point the scripture in case if you wanted it. Because it's in Matthew 5, 43 to 48. Matthew. And that's what he speaks yeah. about. You know, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, pray for those who have to you. And then he yes. keeps going. And he says, he makes his sun rise on the evil and the good, and he sends them on the just and the unjust. And then he says, for if you love those who love you, what reward have you? And then he keeps going, and then at the end, that's where he says, therefore, you shall be perfect. Just as your father in heaven That's the perfection. It's right here, yep. And he's comparing it because because even further before that it says, Let your word yes be yes and your no be no, saying don't swear, right? And he said, What goes beyond these is from the wicked one. You heard that it was said an eye for an eye in the two for a tooth, referencing the old testament, Yahweh's law. But I say to you, do not resist the wicked. I hope you listen to Hakadesh. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn him the other also. And he who wishes to sue you, take him or take away your inner garment. Let him have your outer garment as well. Whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. give to him who ask of you. And from him who wishes to borrow from you, do not turn away. You heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. This is Yahweh's version of perfect. Love your neighbor, hate your enemy is a refer reference in the Old Testament again. Right. But I say to you. Love your enemies, bless those cursing you, do good to those hating you, pray for those insulting you and persecuting you. You know, and we get examples of that, like of every day, you know, every every week we have, you know, someone saying something about us, whether because of what we believe, whatever. And we got to love them anyway. That is the father's idea of perfect. So Hakadesh, yes, we do believe that we're supposed to be perfect, but we just disagree with What's your requirements of being perfect? The formula. Okay. But um, he also said. He believes Jesus had to be tested like all the prophets. This is just a comment. And he believes Jesus taught. Well, this was a question. Do we believe that Jesus taught to keep y'all's law? And um, Jesus Christ taught would probably teach that, but not Jesus Barabbas. Jesus, they actually didn't like him because he was challenging their law. And if you don't believe that, I need you to a answer, how come they didn't like Jesus? Why were they trying to unalive him? What did the Pharisees have such a problem with him for? It's because they was challenging their, fa their father, calling him wrong. And he did all his works, which were healing and such, on the Sabbaths. And um, and he called them works himself, you know, because they called him down and saying, you're breaking the Old Testament law by doing these. Because you're working, you know. And he called them works. Because people were saying, like, well, they weren't works. They were just good things he was doing. But he, he literally, he used the word for works in, in many of the ver for verses, you know, which I found interesting. Yeah, he even said, um, if he says greater work shall you do, and, he, and he's doing, what is he doing? Because he's comparing them to what he's doing, right? Right. It's, yeah, and it works. And um, he expected the same out of us. So if we can do it. I mean, if he if he's healing people and stuff, that's what a good work is. You know, he's he's already identifying what they what they are. I think a lot of people think a good work is giving money to the church and stuff like that. I did my works for the day. You know, I, I used my thumbs to send twenty dollars. All right, next page, guys. We we getting there. Let's go. This is from HN 9455. Um, oh, and, and I want to I say I'm sorry for misunderstanding him the first time because he said that he's going to ask again about the Jesus. And he said, it does not mean I am in French. It means I knew. And he says, Jesuis, you know, J-E-S-U-I-S, -S, is I am in French. 
and pronounced differently. So um, he's saying Jesus Barabbas could mean I knew the son of the father and I am goes back to Yahweh. So he doesn't think Jesus wanted his name mixed with Yahweh's. I hope I cover, <laughs> covered that correctly because I got to try to shorten it the best I can or, but um, I guess, what are your thoughts on that artist? I don't know. It's, it's weird. And he even admitted, I was, I read his post that it was strange because the um, translators bring it up as I am. He checked it. He went and checked it and he got that too on the translator. He said it's, so I don't know. I kind of wonder if it, if it wasn't just Bar Abba and they added the, now I know in Spanish though, that it's Jesus and it means, um, savior, I think. You know, when you say Jesus. Yeah, that's what I heard it meant too. Even in the English though, that's what I, that's what I thought it was supposed to mean. But I have a question. If it was just Baraba, why would the Christ go so far to steal the name of Jesus? You know, to me, there's like power in the name of Jesus and he stole it and added it, you know, because there's power in that name. Yeah, that could that, be true too. I mean, that was more of a question. Not, I, I phrased that as a statement, but it was more of a question, you know. It would match what his daddy's works is, because his daddy's a thief too. Yeah, I, I just know that I have used the word Jesus even before knowing this truth. I don't think I used the word Jesus Christ, but I've called on Jesus, and I know there's power in that word. Yeah, but to be fair, I don't blame anyone for being skeptical for what the government says. You know what I'm yeah, saying? yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Hey, Chen, I hope you. I hope that satisfies you. Unless Marie has something to say. I saw she unmuted one time. Going once. No, you're good. Okay. So, to the next question. All right. Well, this was a comment I think from John Mills six four five three. Uh, from some perspectives, they say that the book was written by G uh, Jesus Christ. I read that and I wasn't going to like put it on here because it wasn't really a question. But to me, that just don't make sense. What do y'all think? Well, I mean, it, it could make sense now that I think about it. But I think, it, I don't know. Say that one more time. That the whole book is written by Jesus Christ. And if he means book, I'm, I'm assuming he means like the whole Bible. And then and Jesus Christ was referenced in the Old Testament when he was being baptized. So that's why I'm like, it don't make sense to me because it had to already be well, written. You always, you always hear people say that like every scripture goes back. You can take like, and I don't understand it, but they, they always say, well, the, you know, this scripture it go, it goes back to you can find Jesus in this one. You can find Jesus in that one. And um, all through the Bible, they say that. So maybe that's what he means by that, that you can find Jesus in every part of the Bible, which he's probably right, because you can find the Christ pretty much everywhere. <laughs> it's not uh, Baraba. And that's probably his question, because I know when I was still going to church before I learned this truth, we read the Bible. Like we had a Bible study on Wednesday night and we started, you know, in the Old Testament and went all the way through and the goal from the pastor was to find Jesus in the Old Testament, you know, and now that I've come to this truth, just like you said, Alan, it's finding Jesus Christ, you know, yeah. it, and yeah. I mean, it, and when you look at it like that, it, you know, with, with what Gonon said, that she has a theory that the, the New Testament was written first, I mean, that makes sense, you know, because then all the prophets would already know what have, have you know, they already knew what happened, <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. so... Yeah, um, it, it's yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I Tracy, like the prophets could know what's gonna happen. I think the prophets could still yeah. know what's gonna happen because they can just be talking to Yahweh. He's like, yeah, go tell them I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna go do it. You know, That's, yeah. But um, it this reminds me of a conversation I had with Dan today with the one that y'all prayed for me, and man, it, it was tough. I got through it though. Uh. Dan was bringing up how some some uh, apologists, you know, the ones, the suits, 
and how they bring up how everyone is like, oh, the no one's everyone is, has different interpretations on who the Old Testament is talking about when they're referencing like the virgin is born and this and that and you know just certain passages. And so I basically had to spend most of my time defending that JC, Jesus Christ, is what they were talking about in the Old Testament and defending that that is legitimate. Even though I don't be, like I don't follow it, worship it. <laughs> it was awful. It was just awful. Had to defend the enemy for a good like hour. It's just ridiculous. Anyway. Wow. <laughs> uh the next question is from um question slash comment. Chris dang, I hope I got this right. B one P. Chris B1P, if Christ is the head of the temple, shouldn't that make us the body of Christ and therefore the temple? I I don't think so because um there's a thing in there that says Jesus said he was his body, you know, John explained that he said destroy this temple and in three days I'll rebuild it. And John explains he was speaking of his own body. And it's mm -hmm. like Okay, well, then Paul takes that and he changes it and says that everybody in the, that everybody that believes in him is the temple. And that doesn't make sense to me. It's like two different things happen in there. Yeah. It is just about everything. So basically, you're saying we believe, or uh, you believe that the temple is Jesus' body. Right. Gotcha. And it's like Paul twists a lot of things. It's like he said that everybody would be judged by my gospel, and then Jesus said people would be judged by my words. You know, so he's he's like he's almost stealing away the thunder. You know what I mean? With his statements, because he even said, "Shall I come at you with a rod of iron?" You know, in one verse, and I'm like, "What?" You saying Paul said that? Yeah. Yeah, Paul is Paul is boastful like that. He he uh, called the other apostles super apostles to try to make it seem like they were uh, that like like they were like him, which is materialistic and boastful and stuff like that. Even though the other apostles, even though you know I know the truth about them, Peter was said to only eat bread and olives and only have one coat. You know, they they were way more humble, so to speak, than. <laughs> Than Paul was, you know, because if they need to get, if Peter needed to get fed by living in someone's house for a day or so, he would only require bread and olives. That's not much. Paul was requiring steak out here. It's crazy. I think I you're right, Kip. I think he took his words and tried to make them his own. Yeah, he was trying to. He was trying to um, to uh, glorify himself and raise himself up, kind of like what the Christ consciousness is. And that's what I mean. That's what Paul teaches. Oh yeah. It sure does. You know, that to elevate yourself other than to serve others, you know. <clears throat> but yeah, okay. Where were we? Nikki, Abba's daughter. Oh, by the way, I, I was going to just say that I've always thought, and I'm sure that most Christians have, that, that our body was a temple at first as well. So, you know, that's understandable. I don't know if I thought that was common. That Was that common to you guys as well? I thought that as well too. Yeah, Tim. Okay. Just checking. I just want to try to speak with everybody's opinions on, you know, that could be listening. Um, so Nikki is Abba daughter. She has another question. In first John four, four, she's asking, is that Jesus Christ or is that Jesus Barabbas? And then the same thing for John 14, 12 through 28, which I'll bring up again when it's time. John four four. John four four, yeah. First John four four. Okay. I don't got the wrong book. You watching basketball? That's 1 John 4, 4, right? Yeah, kitty, get off my Bible. 
and every spirit that confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. Okay, that is a very complex um, verse. I covered that in, uh, I think when I was talking about the satyrs and stuff. I don't know if I, how in-depth I went into it. Because that word for every is not correct in uh, the Greek. They have written pan. Every pan spirit that confesses not that that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of Theos and this and is of the spirit of the Antichrist so it's not correct in the in the verse and you know how Luke said we played the flute for them and they did not dance that goes back to the pan spirit too yeah. but those verses um, I'll have to go over that and cover that in one of these lives like bring them up and look at them in depth because when I looked at that I was like what you know they've had this wrong all these years that's probably another reason they want to snatch out the those three little books from John too you know and say they're not very valid because they know if people dug into it they would see it yeah And she's saying, so you, and you think that was Jesus Christ or Jesus Barabbas? I think he's talking about the Christ one there. I do. Because Antichrist doesn't mean, I don't think it meant, um, like against, because Antitheos in first century meant, uh, godlike. So I'm having a, I'm thinking that the anti meant God, uh, Christ-like or either vice Christ or deputy Christ. And probably um, a vice Christ, because if you say um, vicarious Christi, which is what they call the Pope, that that would be the same as saying uh, Antichrist in English. And I know that's, that'll make people's head spin off, but it, it is. It's the exact same meaning. I think we covered that one night on here. Yeah, we're going to get questions that we probably going to have to um Go back and redo yeah, again, so, like talk yeah. about again. But that's a, I mean, hey, it's not like you, you know, you're doing a whole video for it. It's like a, you know, good five minute answer anyway. And they might be new people, so they just don't know. Um, uh, White Eagle Warrior uh, is circumcision of the father, or is it a sexualized blood ritual from Yahweh? And I think this guy is asking, it's more like a rhetorical question, I guess. Cause I think he knows um, the truth. So, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I see that as not being from Father. Yeah, definitely a blood ritual from Yahweh. Yep. To prove your loyalty to him, because he is insecure and jealous. Um. So, Faye Bueno six five 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 from YouTube. And Jorel Cologne, 6407 from YouTube, desperately wants to get a Discord link and join the family. Oh, awesome. Okay, so I said I'll bring it up here and maybe we will find a way to reach out to him some kind of way. Um, because you can't message Tim? anybody on YouTube. Yeah? Tim, can you send me um, that in a private message, their, their, um, how to get a hold of them? Their YouTube channels? Yeah, whoever it was that you said wanted to be on the uh, Discord. Okay. I'll if we just know back. what video they posted on, we can message them back with an invite from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It actually is. I think, isn't it already in the, the top the of comments? each video? Oh, is it? I thought it? I thought we had that put in the top of the videos or something. Uh, how to get a hold of us no oh well i'm <laughs> okay so i uh faye is one of them i didn't know that I, i'm a faye was the faye bueno i thought that i was like is that faye but i thought it was just another one my bad faye so faye's already in here we just got to yeah, get jorel good. then so i'll send you jorel okay well okay sounds good all right and look we done with page two now we on page three yeah. all right um, I hope I say this right. Sibulet, fifteen sixty. 
Uh, she says, hi from France, by the way. She says, um, she tried sharing Barabbas with a friend and she replied with Acts 3.14, um, specifying the murder part. Um, so she wants help proving this to a friend. I guess, I guess she's like looking for some tips, some suggestions. I want to read Acts 3.14 real quick. I know it's just basically calling him a murderer and then, and so her friend is like, see, it said he's a murderer. So that's what he is. You know, ask your friend, have she ever been accused of something that she wasn't was or like, or that she didn't do or let me see three, four, wasn't was, that sounds silly out here. <laughs> I know that is our Faye, my bad Faye. Um, Acts three fourteen. But you denied the set apart and righteous one, and asked that a man, a murderer, be granted you. Yeah, but now that's said, Peter speaking too, though. Mm -hmm. So he could he could not be telling the truth too. That's gonna hey. be hard. For that's gonna be hard for her friend to say. What? Peter's not telling the truth. I know. <laughs> but you killed the Prince of Life, whom God raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses. That's what it says. I wonder. Oh wow! Well, I'd have to analyze that. That's even got the uh, de word in it. Yeah, and the set apart and the righteous one, right? Because she could it be talking about James the Just, and then and ask that a man, a murderer, that's Jesus Barabbas, be granted to you. I'm gonna so write that verse down so I can analyze that one. I really think the apostles was confused about which one was the right one. <laughs> I think they, I think they were so indoctrinated by the Hebrew roots, you know, with the Torah and all that, that when both of them came. They just they they ended up going to the one that gave the signs, just like their ancestors. They did the signs and wonders instead of just good works, you know. And um, and that's the reason why they were discussing who was greater. They had doubt. They were doubtful. But all the other people, they weren't doubtful. They ran towards Barabbas. They chose him on the first. They didn't deny him before all the Pharisees. You know, they screamed for him. But that is a good one to analyze, though. You already on it. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> I kind of look at it. See, there's the E word, so I don't know. I'll have to really look at that one close. I can't I'll look at it and find it. out. <laughs> Tune in. I'm gonna save that question and I'm gonna put it on my on my new paper. Okay. So so we can update for next it. time. Yeah, and I'll I'll time. go over it. Don't give up on us. Who was that? Sibulet. 15 <laughs> <laughs> so Carl someone's gonna trick Did me Nathan one day in the same song weird. oh Nathan Did I'm Nathan, sorry Nathan, Nathan come on come on my bad brother I didn't even see you oh, oh. I didn't even I know didn't I was know. up here hey <laughs> Did somebody <laughs> bite me up I didn't mean to request I'm sitting I'm outside sorry. walking my dog I did not have a question, though. I'm sorry. Sitting outside walking your dog? How's that possible? No, I'm just messing I'm with sitting, you. I'm sitting by the fire, but yeah. I'm kind of, <laughs> You're letting him walk by himself. <laughs> I'm letting her exercise, yeah. Okay. I was just messing with you. <laughs> I'm like, how do you do that? You floating? Anyway. I, I wish. I wish. I wish. <laughs> uh, Carl Cockwell, 2947, says, oh, well, he wants an explanation. Why is the creator allowing all this confusion? I think I that's, think once we well, look at where we're at, at and, what and what Jesus said, um, I think it, I makes, think it makes sense. sense. Somebody's echoing, I'm echoing for something. Oh, hold on. Okay. Um, because it's like when he said we were from below, it literally is katokosmos in Greek and it means the underworld. So we're literally in hell or the underworld. We're not in Father's world. He said, like when he was with Pilate, he said, if this were my world, 
you know, my servants would be there to fight for me. And it's like, they're, this isn't his world. You know, so it's like, he came to rescue us as captives to get us out of here. Now, we may have to unalive, because he said we would pass directly from death to life, you know, to be able to go through that gate, you know. But it's interesting question. Yeah, I agree. Um, so, and Dan asked me the same thing. And what I say is, so this is not, again, I, he said, this is not my place. If it was, my angels would come fight for me, right? And um, so this is not his kingdom. That's another so place I, you can see both of them, though, because in Matthew, the other one says that, the, that at any moment he could call his angels. And mm-hmm. they would be at, at, at his side to fight. Mm-hmm. So you've got you've got the two Jesuses that you can see them in this too. <laughs> and what I was gonna say is, can anyone does anyone think that I can go into another man's house where he lives, and all the people that that is living under his domain, I can just I can come and just force them to leave. You know what I'm saying? I think we all have to choose to leave this place and and this place is not of his world. So he's not really responsible for the confusion, but you can't come into someone else's house and try to put up rules and try to put order, even if there's no order in their house. You know what I'm saying? So Jesus didn't come try to change their laws and change the way they, you know, he just wanted for whoever was choosing him, whoever wanted to hear his message, they can come, they can get his, his, uh, his knowledge, wisdom and the ways out of this place. And then we can go live with him. In his world, you know, where these things, where there is no confusion. You see what I'm saying? I actually do have a question. I I talked, I talked to somebody for about three hours. They kind of know a little bit about what we're talking about. And I was explaining some some things. He he had a lot of questions and um, he was trying to get me to talk to his sister's boyfriend um and this guy i i was like well he's like he he's big on social media and he does these um you know like christian type talks and reels and stuff right and i was like okay because he was like he he's talked to me but i tried to talk to, he was like i tried to talk to him because you've talked to me so much and i tried to tell him yahweh was the devil and he started freaking out on me and i said well let, let me see what his thing looks like and I'm like goodness gracious he has like 272,000 people following him on TikTok and like 100,000 on Facebook and I'm like ah I'm like it's gonna be real hard to convince that guy I mean it's like even the Jehovah's <laughs> Witness when they invest all this money and everything into their building and everything what do you think they're gonna back out of what they believe and what they think I mean it, they're, they're so invested with um, money and things it's gonna be hard to get people to see that but he was asking me things because I told him, you know, I think we live in like a level of um, uh, of hell. And um, then he asked me about suicide. He's like, so people that unalive themselves, he's like, what do you think, you know, your, your father thinks about that or, you know, because it's always told in the church that it's like the unforgivable sin. And, and I was like, oh, that's, I, well, I didn't really think about it, but I was like, ha. Ah. I don't know. Maybe I'll ask the people that are in the group with me, but that was something that he brought up. And, um, he just talked they, about that. They, yeah. I mean, I don't know, but we can talk about it. We don't have to, but he, I, I don't, this guy said he was going to try to come to one of our lives. And I'm like, nah, don't tell him to do that because I already know what he's going to say and stuff. But it's, it's, it's probably just going to be nasty to be honest. He He's too invested. He's got way too big of a following. Like, that's okay. I was like, I, he might I mean, bring some with him. him, but um, I know this guy personally. I've sat down with him and talked with him before. I had no idea he had this kind of social media following, and and, and he did not like me at all because <laughs> I was uh, saying things about Yahweh, and he has a Yahweh tattoo on his forearm in Hebrew, and I was like, man, do you know what that means? But goodness, but anyways, um, bro, if he if he comes, even if he's mean, you know. I think it's worth the the beating we're gonna take. <laughs> I mean, but, uh, I was scared. I was scared of him. He's like three hundred pounds, like six four or something. He huge dude, like huge. So I was definitely scared trying to tell him the truth. 
but I still spoke it regardless. But uh, yeah, what's you know, the worst was, he can do? He he was like, I'm about to beat you up, and I was like, that sounds like Yahweh to me. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> he got more mad, but then Dante came out and he was like, stop, stop, stop. What are you doing? And and, and, and his girlfriend, who's Dante's sister, was like, no, 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 we love Nate. Stop, stop. Don't do that. And he was and triggered. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I didn't want to do that to him. I, I wasn't I wasn't trying to incite violence. I wasn't trying no, to he was just way. telling the truth. The truth. I, be, that's if all the I truth was trying triggers to do. You, you need to start looking at what's going on in your life. You start what you believe in. If just the truth, if I say two plus two is four and you get upset, it's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, I know, but gosh, it, you know how it goes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's but like, anyways, we could talk about, you know, unalive and yourself and things if you want. I, I didn't know how to answer that question, to be honest, because he was like, well, what's the point? And if everything's this and that and this place is just awful, like what? I'm like, well, we did it all. All I could say to him is like, well, I, I think we're here for a reason, and I think that we have a purpose here, and we're not meant to just sit here and be ignorant. Um, and I think we have things instilled inside of us, but I, I, I kind of got a little lost for words, and I didn't know how to keep continuing with it. It's tough because it's a really morbid thing to talk about, and you, it kind of looks bad because it. Not that we promote it, but or not that I promote it, but um. Yeah, we had a whole conversation in the in the group chat about it because we was afraid to talk about it on the live because it's going to get posted to YouTube and she already has two YouTube strikes. So we was kind of afraid. Yeah. Just because of the topic. That's why I was saying that we don't, I'm not trying to, Yeah, I, I do not want nothing to happen to YouTube, so we can just keep it simple. Yeah. And, that, and, that's important and, to me to not, because I don't, I don't want that. We have one more question, though, from... Um, well, two more, but one is like a couple of questions from our car, but it's like the last two questions. And I, afterwards, I, if you guys want to, I don't mind at least being pretty vague and explaining a little bit. But our car, he asked, I think it's a guy, I'm not sure, asked in a paper written by Thomas Hentrich titled, What is in a God's Name? And that day, and he's quoting from that book. And that day, I will remove the names of um, Baal from her mouth. And that day, you will call me my husband. And I think I said that backwards because um, I kind of lost where I was writing that the screen was uh, small and I was busy. But yeah, in the day, in that day, you will call me by my call me by or call me my husband. And then in that day, I will remove the names of Baal from her mouth. Those are the two things he's quoting from the book. So his question. What does the expression names of Baal mean? What what do we think? And um, there's two more questions from him, but uh, well, actually, yeah, two more questions from him, maybe four. But uh, yeah, yeah I just there's several Baals in, in ancient times. There's Baal Peor. I know of one, and <clears throat> Baal Peor was a big phallic symbol. When you look at a lot of the crucifixes in the Catholic Church, you'll see a big phallic symbol in his abdomen, which I never even noticed until I knew about BLP or But it's mentioned in the Bible. But there are several different types of Baal gods. <sighs> yeah, because that was like one of the other questions. It was, um, is it all Baals collectively, or is it Baals the adversary of Yahweh? Or is Baal the ab adversary of Yahweh? I think Baal was one of the adversaries of Yahweh. Um, what do you think about that? It, according to um, even the Steely Dan, I think he was, you know. What happened to Sally? I don't know. Did we lose her? Yeah, I don't know. I requested her to come back up, but I haven't seen her yet. So okay. she must have had to do something with the dogs or something. She'll be back. Okay. But yeah, I, th I thought Bell was one of the adversaries, maybe maybe his biggest adversary, who knows. But And uh, when it comes to the names, I think there's like, so all the prophets had names of Yahweh, you know, either, uh, you know, like Isaiah, you know, um, Jeremiah, you know, Daniel or uh, E-L, you know, for L. 
they all had some kind of names related to either El or Yahweh. And I think it's the same thing with Bell. They got all these other names that, you know, because Bell is their God, who a fallen angel who most likely slept with a woman way back in the past and had children and was ruling his people. And they were naming him after that, naming some of their kids after him. But um, the author mentions, according to Hosea, Bell, they are or Bells, whatever, they are kept alive due to their names. The, the usage of their names is, and he's asking, is this a piece of the puzzle to us? It's not significant to me, but I don't know about you guys. Um, kept alive due to their names. I think it's, it's kind of like status. It, you know, that's what the first thing that rang the bell to me is like, even someone in this world who's kept the name just because he's part of a, a big name family or something like that. Right. There she is. You got a so, cat, Sally? I do have a cat. I have three dogs and a cat. She is angry. Uh, she's, uh, she's like 18 and she cries every now and again. I think she's on her last leg. Poor thing. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Sorry, I had to reply to an email from a customer. I'm sorry, it, it, I was gone so long it bumped me out. But thank you for your patience and having me back up. Oh, no worries. Poor kitty. She's okay. <laughs> um, so another question from our car. I mean, th these are all from our car. If Jesus points to Joshua... Doesn't that mean that Yahweh saves? Well, it's like, does he save? Because out through the Old Testament, he says that from dust you came and from dust you'll go. And he talks about how a man is um, born and he, and he works and he reaps the gain and he leaves it to his sons. It's like, he. I don't see a big... Um, Anything in the Old Testament that says that there's some kind of eternal, lasting reward, you know? Yeah. Because he, I, I, I mean, he can't really promise anything, really. He can only promise, like, earthly well, His things. promises are vague. His yeah. promises are, you know, very dualistic. So do this, and I'll do this for you. But then he does the opposite. And I promise I'll never do it again. <laughs> like only like letting the, two like people the into the promised land? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll never flood the earth, but I'll flood it in certain never areas. Never flood the earth again? But just yeah. not the whole thing. Yeah, yeah and that exactly. was Caleb, I think, that means dog, and I can't remember what the other one was. There were two of them that made it into the promised land out of all those people. Joshua was the name of the other one. Joshua yep. and Caleb, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. And Caleb means what? Dog? Dog, uh-huh. Huh. Dang. I guess every dog has his day. Someone's trying to come up. Where are you? Hold on. Magnum. Hey, Magnum, how you doing? Hey, aloha. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, we hear you. No way. It's working. That's good. <laughs> hey, aloha, everybody. Are you yeah, Hawaiian? Just... And it, it, not originally. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, I was no, just wondering because you said aloha. I just thought it was pretty cool. I don't know any Hawaiians, so go ahead. I'm sorry, bro. Uh, well, I I currently uh, am on this uh, chunk of earth. I guess you know most people call Hawaii. I guess so. But uh, <clears throat> but at any rate, I wanted to say uh, aloha to everybody and thank you for uh, for being here because um, I think you guys are. Uh, you know, what you guys are talking about, you know, is likely the most important uh, information that we could be talking about at this juncture, right? Uh, with all the craziness that's going on in the world and everything. So thank you for being here and thank you for remaining on topic and, uh, and being diligent. So, Well, thank you. But, oh, we appreciate that. But I, I've got a couple things. Uh, I don't know if uh, JP is um, 
what what he's spoken about in in the group or not but um and forgive me if i'm being a bit redundant or whatever but uh, i wanted to uh perhaps share some things that i've uh discovered um after studying the bible for i don't know maybe about 10 years now legal system for probably 25 now uh if i may if if you guys are could indulge me a little bit here? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. So, uh, it seems to me, looking at Genesis 1, um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of uh, a, a term called a glossa or a, a, a dog Latin. Are you familiar with dog Latin? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Okay, great. So um, <clears throat> it's basically capitalization, all capitalization. It's like uh, it's like Latin without the hyphens, right? Um, so when I started reading the uh, uh, Genesis 1, you know, the very first thing, um, you know, in the beginning was a word, and the word was, was with God, and the word was God. And the, the, the earth was without form and void. And I thought that was very interesting, without form. So... As I read on, you know, what is it, um, verse 26 through 28, and God created man, made male and female. Um, then uh, he gave man dominion. So that's the only thing that God gave to man, right, was dominion. And I find it very interesting that we never talk about that kind of stuff in school, right? Never talk about it in church, as I can tell. It's, it's something that's avoided like the plague. But yet, then we move on to uh, Genesis 2. And in Genesis 2, uh, I think you went to the background on your phone, maybe to look at Genesis 2, but we can't hear you when you do that. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'm going to have to do this from, from memory. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> I believe it's in Genesis 2, verse 4. Where, I can read it for you if you like. Uh, yeah, yeah, that'd be great if you would. Thank you. Genesis 2, 4? Yes. Look at that. I'm already right here. Look at that. Great. And I <clears throat> actually know this verse. Yeah. So these are the births of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that Yahweh God made her earth and heavens. Now, no shrub on the field was yet. And stop me when I get to your point. Well, uh, okay, you can stop right there then. So okay. what do you see? What do you see in that, in, in the first portion of that uh, verse? These are the births of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that God, or, or the Father, geez, Yahweh, God, made earth and heavens. Okay, what, what do you see there? What, what pops out at you? The birth. <clears throat> well, the birth. Okay, very good. But it's, it's another the, creation, right? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, it, see, they break it down for you right there, it seems to me, right? So this is the introduction at that mm -hmm. verse. This is the introduction of Lord God, right? So this is where, this is the separator between the, the God and, and Genesis 1. Oh, you created. mean like where it says Yahweh, yeah. Or the, the Lord. creator God, right? The creator God, and then the inventor God. Mm -hmm. So this is this is see to me this is why they uh, they had to disseminate the Bible far and wide because I've always heard it said that the adversary has to give you full disclosure in order for them to stay in universal honor. Okay, so they have to tell you what they're going to do to you, right? And, and, and in essence, get your buy-in so that they, uh, they remain in universal honor. So it seems to me like what they did was they had Genesis 1, right, where they recognized that man made male and female were given dominion, right? Dominion over all the earth and the, the cattle, the fowl, and in the, uh, in the Geneva 1560, Foul is spelled F-O-U-L-E, like, like in an error. And um, 
and and the beasts. So it's not talking about animals. It, I find it very interesting in the King James Bible, the word animal is not used at all, ever. There is not one, one mention of animal in the entire Bible. Now, what I also find very interesting is when you look at that verse that you just read, thank you for reading that, by the way. No but problem. they're showing you the mirror because initially it says this, these are the days or the, the, the generations when God and God created the heavens and the earth. And then it says in the day, right? Not the seven days that Lord God formed or Lord God made, depending on the version, right? Lord God made the earth and the heavens. They flipped it. Do you see that? Interesting. You said, do you see how they flipped it from heavens and the earth when they talked about God? And then when they talk about Yahweh, they talk about earth and the heavens. That's the mirror. The, I say the, heavens it, with the S. Okay. Like the above and, and the below worlds, the two worlds. Well, Is that what you're seems, saying? well, it's not even a world as far as I, as far as I can tell. What, what it seems to me that they're doing is they're showing you, they're, they're describing the invention of the world. Because initially you had the earth. And in Genesis 2, what they're, what they're showing is, they're saying, this is, they're, they're identifying for, for everyone. They're giving everyone the full disclosure of the invention of the world. In other words, the fictional overlay. That's all it is. And that's, that, that's like when Jesus was tempted on the mount and the devil said, behold, all these kingdoms out here, right? You can, they can all be yours if you merely kneel, kneel down and worship me. Well, what did Jesus recognize? It seems to me that Jesus recognized that it was, he, he, and what did he say? You know, get thee hence. You know what I mean? So in other words, he didn't say, he didn't go into great detail. He just, he knew that it was, it was fiction. What did he offer him? He offered the kingdoms of the world. He didn't say, hey, see all these trees? See all the clouds, right? See all the people, see all the houses, see all the rocks, see all the water. This can all be yours. Because what, why? Because he's offering Jesus what already belonged to him, right? everything that was tangible, the only thing he had to offer Jesus was what was fiction, the kingdoms like United States, like, like Germany, you know, they're, they're, they're nothing more than, than, uh, ideas in people's minds. When you cross a boundary from, from United States to Canada, do you vibrate differently or something? I yeah, mean, can I know, you show right? Right? Can you show me the dividing line between the United States and Canada? Unless somebody came along and put up a little sign that said, hey, welcome to Canada, you wouldn't even know you were in Canada. Right. right. Right? But not only wouldn't you not know that you were in Canada, the only way that you would believe that you were in Canada is through your mind and your belief system. You know, it's, it's a fiction. And what they've done is... They've identified the fiction and they said, and then, I'm sorry, go ahead. You were going to say something. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I didn't. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I want you to No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. I was just going to say, you know, we call that little island over there by China, we call it Japan, but they don't call themselves Japan. They call themselves Nihon. Nihon is how you say Japan. Right, but, right. But we, you see, but... You know, you're hitting on the point that I always bring up. Uh, I mean, you just said it perfectly. We wouldn't know that we were in Canada unless there was a sign there. So I always say that, uh, like, that the father, he actually, he came, he was like a teacher that came in the classroom and threw a whole bunch of Play-Doh on the table. You see what I'm saying? Play-Doh and water and stuff. And then he... 
and then Yahweh is like he came in there and started shaping it and started you see what I'm saying and started doing stuff after he got cast down to that area and created what you call this fictional world where well, I don't you say know, created you buildings here what well, well I don't say created I molded, it, to me potted like a potter like he said like me right? in his hands there you go yeah, there you go. yeah. And that's what his children did too. When it says that he had Cain, when Eve had Cain, and she said, I got a man from Yahweh. Cain's children ended up being really good at creating things. You know, metal, working with metals, uh, you know, well, stuff like that. Though. In, inventing, in, inventing though. Inventing though. Because, inventing. Because they could never create. All they could do was put things that's together I that mean. already yeah. existed, right? Yeah. So, so, so the language is very is very critical as well. It seems to me because n never did Lord God Yahweh, uh, you know, whatever you want to call him, never did he never did he create anything. It was always an invention. And the 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 thing about it is where his power comes from is getting everyone to believe the fiction is real period. Now, if you go down through Genesis, Genesis 2, if you continue down, then they had also, you know, he had not caused it to rain, right? And then it doesn't say, oh, then he just, then he caused it to rain. No, no, they, they, he, he, so apparently he couldn't cause it to rain, but what did he cause? He caused a mist to come up from the ground. Well, what do we call each other, right? Mr., Mrs., right? So, you know, more examples of, and then, and then uh, when, when, um, and I'm kind of flying off the cuff here because I don't have it in front of me, but, uh, and then he, uh, he formed Adam from the dust of the ground, what already existed. He yeah. didn't, it, he didn't create Adam, he formed Adam. And then Adam, and then he formed woman, right, from Adam's rib. It says he put him to sleep, right? Now, where does it say that he ever woke him up? And then he took the rib from Adam, correct? Well, what do they what do they call it when you when you uh, when you when you kid somebody, right? You you rib them, right? Right? It's a joke. It's a joke. And and so, you think so, this is the life that that. That they're talking about that he was a liar from the Genesis. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, without right doubt. There. But about the thing the, about it is, but the thing about it is, you were still asleep, and I made the woman, so you ain't see well, me do it. Like, nah, why you ain't do it in front of my face? Well, this is why they don't want to identify. Have you have you been watching the news lately, where they've been um, quizzing the uh, Supreme Court nominees, saying, "Okay, define woman for me," and they're like, oh, I'm, "I'm sorry, I can't." Is it that they can't or they won't? Because in a biblical sense, woman means church. Because, because God created male and female. He did not create a woman. Lord God made, formed a woman. In other words, so Adam was a form, right? He formed Adam. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? That means that Adam was the first form. What's the first form when you're born? So I, I want to say something really quick because a well, lot of these comments, just real quickly, what's the first form when you're born? Well, the the Kabbalist Jews and the people that run this place, they believe in the they them. They believe the Adam Kadmon, the cosmic egg. They think that we were made androgynous originally. Well, Genesis one says he made a male and female as well. I know, but I'm just saying from their probabilistic viewpoint, yeah. what they think, they think, I, I don't think that, but, um, but it, it just goes back to this whole Genesis story of, uh, I don't put much weight in it, but I'm still listening. I'll, I'll shut up now because I want to keep hearing what you have to say. Yeah, go ahead and finish that, finish that thought, Magnum. What was the question again? What was the first form <clears throat> when you were born? I'll tell us. I don't know the answer to that. I'm not even sure I understand the question. Well, 
what's what's the form what what do most people rely on for their identity their parents well the 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 certificate of live birth correct oh you, you mean like the the paper yeah the paper absolutely this is the system no, that they no, invented. that comes after that's not what they rely on they take a look at the child they can see what it is male or female the paper comes after yeah when you leave the hospital you leave with a piece of paper they're not registering you babies it. you already know they're, they're not registering babies they don't <laughs> register babies this is all the this is all the legal stuff this is all the you know i mean we this all, is how we all they understand about everyone. all that but that's well this is how they control everyone by a certificate I understand by that. a piece of paper from when we were born no by the claim to these things because just like jesus rejected the devil and said get the i hands. don't think a piece of paper is going to matter in the end myself well everybody's entitled to their opinion yeah, well, I mean, yeah. I agree with um, everything you said about the creation, about how, uh, you know, Yahweh formed and he, he didn't make things from his um, from his voice like father did. But um, Yahweh is nothing more than government. Yahweh is not uh, some some spiritual entity. Yahweh is the it, that's the other portion of that is they they're identifying the creation of the state of the fiction because <laughs> have you ever met the the, the 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 state of ohio have you ever met the state of hawaii no but they no, use the state don't they use the power of the state all, all day long and all those people have to swear oaths everybody that's in the court system the police officers they're all yeah, swearing the oath. first things first yahweh absolutely. is yahweh is a real physical thing as well is, is it? but I, I i can agree with the that yahweh is that is real still government not... and stills all those rules and regulations yeah. that's why the o's are in place so i can get on board with you on that so this is literal though as well yeah well how do you know that yahweh what do you mean yahweh is is I, i'm what evidence is there of that he's not omnipotent or omnipotent he's not everywhere at once Okay, is he somewhere? Yes, he even where? lives. He lives where, where basically where CERN is, according to Revelations. <clears throat> well, and again, you know, I everyone's entitled to their opinions about it, but I just thought I'd come out here and share with you guys what I've discovered over in about twenty. We appreciate that. Twenty-five years of study. Yeah, we can appreciate having. that. No, yeah, we appreciate so. that. We've all been studying too. It just, sure. you know, when we when we disagree, if there's something we disagree with, we we gonna, gonna stand yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah. You know no. what I'm saying? No, yeah. of course, yeah. Okay. But I mean, you know, but it's it's just interesting to me though that people make claims, and unfortunately, uh, the vast number of people that make claims, they they're making claims to things that they have no firsthand knowledge of. It's all based on hearsay. I mean, I've been pulled over before, and I, I've had the. Uh, uh, the brothers, you know, wearing the fancy uniforms tell me that, uh, you know, the state of Hawaii said this and that. And I say, well, then th that's great. Can, hey, can you bring the state of Hawaii down here so I can talk to it? Oh, now you're being kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Who brought it up? I mean, you know, <laughs> this this magical entity called state of Ohio or state of state of Hawaii, uh, you know, I mean, extrapolate that out to everything. Let what, me ask what, you something real quick, sure, Magnum. Sure. Yeah. I, now I grew up, I grew up in um, rough neighborhoods, you know, um, the black community. Uh, and there's some unwritten stuff that goes on in there, unwritten rules. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't care how imaginary you think they are just because you can't come talk to these unwritten rules. I guarantee you, if you do the wrong thing in that area, you're going to feel it for real. Like, give me an example. Like, let's say you do something to a kid. They're mm -hmm. not going to care about the cops coming to get you. Okay, you yeah. See what I, I'm saying? Fair enough, yeah. 
So I think what's happening is, and this is, this is just my opinion, but <laughs> what I think is that this is another example of using some truth to get to go to get out of hand and and go too far because you need some you need to you need objection too like you need to actually look at the world as well to confirm what we're reading because anyone can lie about us but when the things that Jesus say or the things that he claimed that he did it's all evident with our eyes our ears our you know our hearts is relative and in reality therefore it's it makes it so much more believable and it gives us so much more faith um but to go off the handles and stuff and say that something is not real like you know america is real i agree that just because i cross over that sh that stuff shouldn't matter i'm just a guy in the forest or on a piece of land yeah i get the, con the construct of the world being put here yeah, but I'm not gonna pretend like the, like the consequences don't exist. Like these real, I mean, people die in wars over these things, over these imaginary lines, for Absolutely. real. Absolutely. And people grow up without do. fathers for real over these imaginary lines. Absolutely, all day. But yeah, so. Yeah. But what so would happen like, if all those imaginary lines disappeared? Would people still die? Was, I mean, and I'm not disagreeing with that, but who cares? It's they are here and they're here to stay until until it's time to go. Until it's time for us to go, not for not for the lines to go. I ain't got no control over the lines, and nor do I care to. It's not my job, and Jesus didn't care either. Okay. It's not, I don't, you know, yeah, it's, I, it's useless. Well, I, yeah, I, I guess I'm. Uh, that's. I'm not. If, I'm not. I'm just believe, passionate. I'm not trying to. I don't yeah, want you to no, think I'm angry at you. No, 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 no. That's fine. It's you know, you're like I say. You know, everybody's entitled to. I mean, I think and... it's, it's just useful to Yahweh in this world. You see what I mean? But it, when we become, when we become children of Father, then that no longer applies to us. I don't think. Does that no make sense? Applies. <clears throat> what no longer applies? It, well, see, Yahweh thing. likes to number people. He likes to count and 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 count his people. You know, and it's like well, well, but regardless of what Yahweh does, okay. Does that mean that you have to agree with it? No, of no. course. Mm -mm. Clearly, we don't agree with you. <laughs> yeah, but well, we, you but, well, we are realists we about what he's doing. That's yeah, why we, we're doing these lives is that we don't agree with it. We're trying to get the <laughs> truth out about who the real father and is. And give people protection uh, or the power to overcome it because we don't, we can't fight back. Like we can't kill it or no, unalive no, no, it. No. Sorry, I, but I, did I say anything about fighting? No, back? no, I'm not. I'm not saying you are. No. No, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Well, I'm not I'm arguing with you at all, brother. I'm just a guy talking to you. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm just asking the question, you know, it's just like, so just like Jesus, when he was approached and he was offered fiction, uh, could it be that he recognized it was fiction? So this is, this is the point, right? Is yeah. it that, that the, the conflicts come from the fiction? Do you the understand there's two Jesuses? Yeah. I mean, I've heard the argument. Uh, and I've heard well, you guys talking we're about, about it. We're about, yeah, we're about the two Jesuses. And I think that the one that you're talking about was the, was the Christ. He was the one that was tempted. You can't tempt Baraba. <laughs> There's not one thing he needed. That would be a waste of time. Well, exactly. but see, the thing about it is that people are tempted every day. See, this yeah, is, but that's this not is you're, not, you're talking about the father, you know, you're talking about the, the, the I think creator you're missing of everything. The point. Yeah, I, th I think you're missing Maybe. the point. Maybe. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's regardless of, of, of which, which Jesus character you're referring to, okay, is that mm -hmm. we're, we're in the world, right? Not of the world, perhaps, okay? Mm -hmm. But if we're in the world, if we're still, if we're still in the world, unfortunately, still have to deal with these worldly people, people that want to believe all day long that all these fictional lines exist, they, they actually exist, and that their authority stems from you believing, right, that in, in all of these fictions. So they're going to test you, it seems to me. Does that make sense? Well, I so understand Yahweh, the concept of what you're saying. I just don't how, know how you're connecting the Jesus 
and there because there's there's the earthly stuff which we're talking about right here um anything to do with fiction and all that stuff it's all earthly stuff and well, jesus worldly. christ is all earthly it's worldly okay right? worldly okay. earthly it's the same to me well no worldly is if there's an apple on the tree and you're hungry eat the apple right i mean not see now we're just talking like okay now yeah i'm a, i'm going out to lunch now <laughs> So, I don't know. I mean, we trying to we just trying to yeah, communicate yeah. with each other. But no, no, no just, right? No, yeah. I'm just saying that there's the difference between the tangible and the intangible. You know, yeah, but you you know what right. she means though, like basically the worldly things, materialistic views. Yeah, absolutely. Well, of course, that's the that's where people material no materialism. This really has nothing to do with materialism because it's all fiction. Well, fiction is material. Well, no, well, it isn't. That still no, goes in the not. realm of it's okay. Well, there's no fiction in Father's world. There's no fiction. It's all truth. I agree. There's no fiction. I absolutely agree. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, agree. I, I, so I we're get talking about two saying. worlds. I get what he's saying. Absolutely agree that there is no fiction in God's world. Genesis one, when God created, right? Creation. Yes. Fiction is another realm that is of Yahweh is of Jehovah. That's the fictional realm that he runs. If we if we partake in the fictional realm, I'm not talking about the two different Jesuses. No, I get what you're saying. That, 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 it's a belief realm. system. It's a belief system. Yeah, That's no, what you're trying to say, right, Magnum? I, I'm it's a belief to get system, back to but it also transcends right. because it's it becomes real when we claim it. That's my yeah, point. You, but, but the belief in it makes it real, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Well, it I, I makes it real in, I, in the mind. I, it makes it real in the mind, and that's where the problems come in every single time is when people believe so in So if the a person fiction. says they're a cat, if they say they're a cat, and in their mind they believe they're a cat, is that real? And if we all uh, agree on no. it. Obviously, it's not. I still don't okay. see it. I still don't get it, guys. <laughs> so that's There's just a difference me, between that and truth, yeah. And if you believe you're an American, is there truth to that? If you believe in it. In this well, world, yes. Um, if you, but that, if you, yeah, if you but that doesn't claim, mean that we believe in that. Like, well, I'm asking you, do you believe, believe that? To be an no, American means believe. someone that no, was born I think I'm an American. The no, father. somebody will say that, somebody will okay. say to me, are you Canadian? I live in Canada, but I'm not Canadian. I don't believe in flags. I don't well, believe do in know being a part in of anything in this world. How do you know you live in Canada? That's the point. Because you I was told, told that, and I'm in were, this, and I'm and I'm here. You were told on that. The Earth. Okay, so it's here. Right. Is it hearsay, it, or is it? Do you have firsthand knowledge of that? What does any of this have to do with? <laughs> that's what I'm trying to figure it out. Okay. I know. <laughs> well, listen. Okay, yeah, we can get all about it. Like Magnum, we're not really sure what it's, you're a, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. I know yeah. it's it's a it's a it's an interest. It's it's the construct. We're in the whole time. It, what is the bottom line? What we're, we're getting in the, at? We're in Yahweh's construct, so we we're no, here. No, that's not, not true. Fixed. We are not in Yahweh's yeah, we construct. Yeah, no, we now we get into a bottom line. Okay. It's, all right. All right. We're getting you, somewhere. You, we're getting somewhere. So you, you don't think we're in Yahweh's it. construct. You choose so it what, in the what moment. Do you think? What, what, what do you think then? You choose it in the moment. So you think Yahweh is not here? That's 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 Christ consciousness yep. too. You know, Yahweh they, they think is here. Yahweh is here. Yahweh is here. Yahweh is the government. So the you government don't think he's is real. of Yahweh, but Yahweh but, is not the government. Okay, Yahweh is so, for... Magnum, Magnum, we, we, we have we have something because we're going to try to we try to take everything back to Jesus words here. Sure. And Jesus was clearly trying to tell us things yes. where it's like you are from below. I am yes. from above. Exactly. There's yes. Two different distinctions. Right. There you go. And, and, and if we are from the below, which means Kato. I, I would think that we are in Yahweh's world. We, he is the God of this world. I mean, he was clear about that. So, Correct. Correct. I, oh, okay. Okay. So you Correct. agree on that? Yeah. 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 So for sure. Uh, where, where's the discrepancy then? Like, uh, I'm trying to understand the delineation where you're like, okay, well, it's all what we believe, and I and I get that we live in this world, but we're trying to align ourselves with the things that Jesus was saying. Absolutely. First and foremost, like, because that's, that's what I'm trying to believe in. 
Right. That, right that's right. what I'm uh, living my life Magnum. by every day. Absolutely. Magnum. In Amos nine, it says yeah. that it says that if you try to escape this place, Yahweh will come and drag you off the mountains. He'll come. He'll come take you from the depths of the sea. He'll come get you, basically. Uh, is that not physical? Is that the government? If you try to escape, in other words, if if you make the claim to being his property, then then it seems like he has every right to. But he's physical, though. He's not just a government. He's not an well, idea. The government is physical, isn't it? D doesn't the government? Uh, I'm talking about he is not. I said that he's not. He's not omnipotent. He's not everywhere at once. No, the, he not, is is the government, a, is it? Yes, it, the government is everywhere in America at once. It is. Are you just being a contrarian? I mean, no. you know, <laughs> no, we like I mean, making, you, if Magnum, somebody's driving, Magnum, if you're driving we like down the making road, sense here. We like if making you're driving sense. down the road, if you're if you claim to be driving down the road and the speed limit's 55 and you're going 55 and somebody passes you going 90. Where's the cop, right? It, it, is there is there always Sometimes a cop to pull these up. people over? Sometimes he does. Sometimes he does. Sometimes he doesn't. Right. That means that does that mean that Yahweh is omnipotent? Omnipresent? No, we don't think what? that though. That no, a, of course not. We were just talking about that. Of course not. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. he's not. My Government face is, is in not. my hands. But uh, but but I think uh, okay, so do you think that Yahweh has to work through people? Because I do think this yes. because he isn't omnipotent and he isn't this like thing that everyone thinks that he is. <clears throat> and he has to work through people to make his prison system work. Absolutely. That's what you're saying. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm Absolutely. trying to understand you. Well, they, they, he, he has to have. Uh, he has a lot. Volunteers. He has a lot of people, pretty much 98% of the world. Exactly. Exactly right. Exactly right. We got a bunch of them lining but up I, to vote come about another month. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I agree. <laughs> um, yeah, they're uh, they're lining up to, to uh, pick the lesser of two evils, right? <laughs> yeah, still All being the controlled Yahweh by opinion, Yahweh. But, the government yeah, yeah, is yeah. being controlled by Yahweh. Why do you think that right. there's a pyramid scheme? It's a person on top of it controlling all of it, pulling They're the strings. Very well made. They're very well may be an no, there entity is. that, well, you, you <laughs> might be right, but guess what? I've never met him, so I wouldn't know. Okay, right? you never met the person that made the building you're in, but you know he, he exists. Well, yeah, that's that's pretty self-evident, yes. Okay, same thing. But to believe that there's some evil entity, some some one evil entity that's controlling the whole thing, it's, yes. it, I mean, it's interesting, right? But I've never met it. I've never well, met it. He says it, so he sets up the kings and stuff. He is, there is an entity that's setting up all this. There's one well, guy on the top of the mafia. It could very On top of the mafia is a guy that leads the mafia. He is this. Well, well, you can tell this. Of course. These are out there doing Those what they do. Those are all man-made. Those are all man-made. Of course they are. Somebody had to make every, something. Somebody. Whether it was a... Uh, a man had, oh, there you go. Somebody and you got Second Samuel means twenty two. Stop, right? You got Second you Samuel twenty two. It records his fall from heaven, actually, but people don't even know it. But that's yeah, what it did is. Did the government fall from heaven, Magnum? <sighs> you know, I have no idea where government came from. I was born. No, did it? But did I it fall born, from heaven, though? I was born. All of a sudden, I'm here, and I just happened to, you know. But can, I'm, I'm, I'm can taught the government... in these government schools, right? You're taught in these government schools, and they teach you that red means stop and green means go, right? They they, they name all the roads. So you're, you're the, you're the captives that Magnum, Jesus I can ask you, I came can to ask set you free. You. Is what you are. You're a captive. Well, yes. That there you go. Exactly. So that's the whole point of the uh, story of of the salvation of Jesus, right? Is he, he, he is the one that showed us how to get out of, because we are in. By default, we're, we're in. We're not disagreeing with any of that. Right. You keep on bringing it back to things that we don't disagree with. You're not answering the question, though. Did, can a government fall from heaven? I have no idea. What is a government? Have you ever met government? 
so at first you knew so much about a gov what a government was and that it was Yahweh, who he was, what his name was. You knew all now you don't know what a government is. <laughs> if, if, if you say so. <laughs> That's what you said. Okay. Well then. That's what That's I'm what saying. Like, said. Because when <laughs> I asked you about it, you started saying everything else around the thing, you know. Like if I ask you about a desk, you'd be like, "Well, oh, this is hard. It's the government solid, but is it's not the, a desk. The government is the is it, it, whatever you want to call that, right? Those that are going to claim that they are with the government, that is the controlling factor. That's what we interface with. I'm not disagreeing with us right? not interfacing with a government. I'm asking you, did a government can a government fall from heaven? What I don't understand what you mean by can a government fall from heaven? Can, can because you, it don't make sense. What doesn't make sense? You, you well, say that Yahweh, Yahweh was the government. I ask, can a government fall what, from heaven? Uh, I'm trying to say Yahweh is a person. Yahweh instills the government. Yahweh, the, I, what difference does that make? It. That's wow. oh my goodness. You're trying to because we're the point that we were trying to make was that Yahweh is a being, a person. He's physical too. He's right there. If and you what, say so, then if that's no, not belief, if I then, say so, well, the uh, Bible like, said so. Hey, that's fine. My description of the Old Testament, he is because he, they could hear his footsteps in the garden. I mean, come on. And it's when like, he had a military war, and they had the military camp, he wanted them to dig a hole and and put their feces in there so that he wouldn't step in it. I mean, that's pretty I, physical stuff that's listed about you. him. In right. the Old Testament. Magnum, if, if, I, if, if you were if, the, the, the detective the that case, was on the job. you actually believe that that's just one single entity or whatever, then, you know, I mean, it doesn't really, it, in the overall is. scheme of things, it doesn't really matter, right? The fact of the matter is that this entity called government is the interface, right? Of Yahweh. Is that what you're saying? Well, what's that? Uh, yes, of Yahweh. It is the yes. interface of Yahweh. Yes. You keep saying, hey, we have to that. deal with the government, and no one's saying that we don't have to deal with the government. That's what I don't say, matter. I, I know, but you keep bringing it back to that. No one disagreeing with that. What we're talking about, the part that we started disagreeing on, Magnum, was that if if Yahweh was a physical Greetings. person that's not... Hey, omnipotent, JP, what's uh, up, bro? What we're disagreeing on is if Yahweh is a omnipotent person... May I if I go may, ahead. yeah, go JP, ahead. please. It occurred to me that the fallen were the ones that presented the government. Because, like, if I look at the, the the garden story, first of all, you got like I believe Magda mentioned. I've been having a choppy connection, so I missed it maybe a little bit. But Magda mentioned about dominion, and then all of a sudden, Lord God shows up. Genesis two four, man, Adam, whatever, same root word in Hebrew gets coaxed into the garden or called in or agrees to go in, right? Gets put to sleep, yeah? But then then Yahweh forms. Like, to me, it seems to me when you go in the legal realm, you got to fill out forms, right? Could it be the fallen were the ones that presented the legal, the commerce game, Bingo. the whole government? Bingo. Anyway, that's all I wanted to add in. And, Thank you. And no one's disagreeing with that. I actually said that earlier. I said that the fallen angels had children, and they said they started ruling over their children with governments, nations. That's what this is. No one's disagreeing with that. <laughs> Yahweh is a person. It's physical. But the point. The point is that, that person. Maybe... Uh, if you ask me, Tim. Uh, pardon me, brother. You know I appreciate you, bro. But person, if I look that up, it's a, a mask, right? Persona. Uh, person is not a, a living, breathing entity. It's something right? else. It's a mask I'm born a, on a stage. I'm a person, and I have a body. Yahweh is a person, and he has a body. No. Look it up. Even in the English, that's not what person defines as. Romans 2.11, for there is no respect. Person is a personality, an idea, an essence, a spirit, a nature. Romans 2.11, okay. okay. for there is no respect of persons with God. Magnum, Magnum. Yeah. can I finish what I was saying, please? A person is a personality. It's where it comes from. It's a nature, an essence, an idea, a philosophy. That's what we all have inside these skin suits. No, okay? No. That's what we are. We have different I thought, personalities. Hold on. I thought we were spirits. 
That's what a spirit is. A spirit, no, a, a essence, persona, a nature. Oh my if goodness. you look up, if you just, Tim, if you look at the etymology of the word, it comes from Latin, persona, mask. It's what asker, actors use, a persona. Because they're they, acting like another person. Another look person. Up, another so another personality, another look, nature, another look essence, up, another look spirit. Up the references of person in the Bible. It's not I flattering. Wish. I really it's not wish. flattering. No one cares. I'm trying to make a whole no. other point, and you guys keep dragging me away from it. Do we keep dragging you? Yes. Go ahead, talk. What's the point? Magna, you're just here to be a contrarian. You remind me of Dan so much. Y'all will get along. I know a light bulb you guys can change. <laughs> wow. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Come out I'm here sorry. and try that to share. share stop, uh, stop. Come out here and try to share um, research. And this is this is, this is is what we get. Wow. That's interesting. You guys can't I, even I, reason. I, 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 what, what, did I, what did I say that deserved that? I'm just trying that? to reason with you guys. What did I say that deserved that, bro? You didn't, you didn't deserve it. I was wrong. I got frustrated. That's why. You know why okay. I got frustrated? You. Because you're Thank doing you. me wrong too by not letting me speak. It's amazing Could how often people would do you wrong. Each other, bro. Magnum, if I, if can I, I still speak? Can I speak, Magnum? If I've offended Magnum, you, can you find Magnum, it in your you're heart still to doing it to me. Bro. You're still doing it to me. Uh, could you're it be still that I'm doing trying it. to apologize? You're stabbing me and apologizing while you're doing it. And you're still doing it. Can you stop doing it first and then apologize? Could it be it's a two way street here, brother? Can all you right. stop interrupting right. all, me? It's all good. Just just talk. You know what? It's okay. Just I give talk. up. Nope, it's all right. I give up. Anyone else? You guys got the floor. Listen, the last thing I'll say and I'll leave. Look up person, reference to person in the Bible. It's not flattering. You know, if you want to be a person, that's up to you. It's a choice that you're going to make. But that's, that's, look up Romans 2.11. That's just one reference. But you now know, he wants it, to talk take, about what a person is again. All right, but anyway, you guys, Fair thanks enough. for thanks for indulging me. You guys have a great day. Blessings, Blessings, everybody. I find it crazy how often people are rude to someone first, and then, yeah, I did repay evil with evil. I said you can go change a light bulb with Dan. Yes, that was wrong. But well, stop doing me wrong first, please. We all get frustrated at times. Yeah. It, like you act like it came out of nowhere. Like I was just out here because your name was Magnum. I, I think you're dumb or something. No. Look at how you treating me. And then you refuse to acknowledge it. And then you want to give me a fake apology while continuously doing it to me. I think you think it's cute. Trying to be Mr. Nice Guy. Try to get everybody on your side. Oh, look how, look how. I made Tim treat me. I think that's pathetic. I'm not here for an image. Hey, Tim. I've spoken with Magnum a lot over the years. I think you, you may be a little off on that. So, hey, I, I, I was but trying. am I wrong? You know, am I wrong? Am I wrong for being off? This is the, this is, well, they say first right impressions and everything, off? right? Brother, are we out here to judge one another and, 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 and look? See, look, here look, it is again. I out. can't be correct right. about what happened to me without being accused oh, of judging who someone. Who's, Tim. Listen, I'm explaining why I'm upset. Stop trying to criminalize me for doing it. Well, maybe no. I'm upset. Am I explaining? I'm just saying just stop. I, I've spoken with If y'all love me so much, let me speak about why I'm upset. Right, I understand ahead. you know go him. Ahead. I understand you got a different opinion of him. I understand. I got friends too that I'm cool with, but other people ain't. No, all I'm saying is that I've spoken with him longer than maybe you have. Forgive me if it upsets you. Look, Tim. Come up, Eileen. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not upset I'll, at you I'll at all, brother. Down. I'm upset I'll at this situation down. right now. You're still my brother. Even Magnum is still my brother. JP, no, no, JP, just it's fine. Just talk. If you got something to say, just talk. Go ahead, Elin. She wanted to come up. She's here. All right. All right. Yeah, I, I think it's all like there's a whole kind of... Um, I don't know the word where people are going down this road of doing all the legal stuff. And it's not that I don't agree that that's the stuff that they're doing today. Uh, you know, where it's the sea and the land and all this other stuff. I understand that. Um, we're not doing that. I don't care what the piece of paper says. The piece of paper, if you get your name taken off so that you're not attached to 
um, you know, them controlling you through this whole contract that you basically did or whatever that your parents did. Um, that's not what we're doing. And like Golan and I, Golan and I have talked before, and we don't believe that a piece of paper in the end is going to be what's going to keep you like away from the father. It's not. So you guys can go down that road all you want. That's not where we're going. We're not I, on that, that's what that journey. Was, I don't think that's what he was saying. Well, he is talking about that, Nathan. He is talking. It's all about the legal stuff. That's where he was, he was going with the legal stuff. Trying to line that with Yahweh, but I mean, clearly we no. all know that a piece of paper doesn't. <laughs> do I don't even accuse him of doing that. I'm telling you, the only you, thing I, I accuse I, him of doing it was being rude. I agree with everything the man oh. said, besides Yahweh being um, uh, uh, omnipotent. That's the only right. thing I disagree with the man about. And I tried to ask him a simple question, and he 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 couldn't answer like a grown man. He wanted to answer like a, a kindergartner. Pretending like he don't understand the question, dancing around it, answering things I never asked. Even if he did, Tim, why why do you need to talk about it? Come on, bro. JP, he, he's you know you're up here defending this other guy. Why do I need to talk about it? I'll defend, I was, I'll I was just disagreeing with the man. I said I told him I'm just a guy <laughs> talking to you. I'm, I'm not saying, even there I don't to. I think that's a good energy. Like if somebody is so called. Right, we get frustrated with someone. I oh, don't man. think we should be saying negative things. It's about okay. Them, you know? It's okay That's for him all. to come up and I, I, he I, had I, his I chance to say his feel. Yeah, and, and, I let, and ahead, we Tim. all let him. We let him talk for a while. JP. Yeah. Um, I'm with you. I don't agree with everything the brother when, said. When did I not... disagree, JP? When did I disagree no. that that it was wrong for me to say that about him? When did I disagree? I, well, I, I said sorry you, for it I, multiple I, times, and I said I shouldn't have did it. Didn't I say that? I fail to believe you did disagree with the brother. What I'm saying is, JP, regardless you're not of answering what, my what, question, brother. See, this is key. I just said key I, I failed. I, I failed. I said, to did agree. I disagree when I said I was wrong for calling? When y'all said you said that I was wrong for calling him that name, I said I no, agree with that. What I, I, I said I is, oh, bro. Please forgive Man. me. I'm sorry. I, just I, wish I, can, I can't even finish. You know, if I could finish the sentence, things would be a lot more clear. I'm so, just please one, forgive me, brother. I already do. Okay. I just, I still, but don't keep doing it to me. The other guy no, was I'm, saying sorry and doing it to me still. Well, uh, I'm not the other guy. Yeah. But you're doing it now. I just want to say something. Go ahead. <clears throat> I apologize to the dude. I never disagreed that saying what I said to him was wrong. My thing is, everybody is ignoring the reason why I got upset. I didn't just get upset randomly. I was talking with the dude. Just, I, I literally could care less about the, what, what the guy was even talking about. The only reason why I'm even engaging is because we're on TikTok. Okay? I asked the man a simple question. He danced around my question. Now, me calling him out for, for dancing around my question... It's not me probing at anything. It's not me trying to start a fight. It's not me doing anything. Stop trying to accuse me for, for saying a fact. Okay? And then I, call, and then I called y'all out for interrupting me Tim, when I was trying to speak to the man about the government thing. That's Tim, all. Tim? Brother Tim? I'm listening to you. If I accused you of anything, brother, would you please find it in your heart to forgive me? That's I already the last have. Thing I wanna, the last thing I would want to do is accuse you of anything, brother. I already forgave you. Uh, I already forgave him. And he, he's, he's the one that done the thing to me. You're fine. Well, bro, all I'm suggesting now, is I'm not, uh, and I don't mean it personally for you, brother, but I think all of us, we need to hold ourselves accountable to a higher authority here. And we should, you know, no one likes to hear ill things about themselves from others. That's all I'm saying. And no one right? likes to be interrupted. No one likes okay, to be ignored. Too. I know, but listen, Did you I, I'm not you, excusing yeah. my behavior. You can behavior. lower your voice, JP. You can lower your voice until it's almost silent. It doesn't mean you're speaking any better than the guy whose voice raises up because he has a little bit more passion in it. I'm not That's the that difference true. between. I'm not saying, I'm just I'm not, saying, I, I don't agree see with how low your voice is getting? Assy, was your friend, JP, Maybe was your friend right for, 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 for cutting me off and not letting me speak? Was he right for that? I just wanted a simple yes or no. Please don't go off onto other thing about this and that. 
Would you repeat the question, please? Was your friend right for cutting me off? No, I don't think anybody's right for cutting anyone off. Was I wrong for 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 um, pointing out that he's avoiding my question? Not that I believe, but what I'm saying, Tim, if you can hear me, brother, not personally to you, if anything, personally to me, I think we need to hold ourselves to a higher standard. That's all I'm saying, brother. I don't disagree with that. Okay, you do? I said I don't disagree with that. Okay, thank you, brother. Please forgive me. I, I wish no conflict. I only wish peace. Okay, let's move on now. Tim, you have other questions that you brought up that you uh, took off of YouTube because you didn't quite finish those. So I only let's had just one more on. from the same guy. Uh, okay. And I <laughs> hope he's still here. Uh, Is it, it was our car, 9115 still. He said, um, our thoughts on ISIS, I-E-S-O-U-S -E equaling ISIS. Oh, say that again. Yeah, I didn't get it either. I didn't catch it. Like E S S E I E S O U S. He says that equals ISIS. And what are our thoughts? Oh, that's the name of that Jesus was supposed to be. Like that was the original yeah. name. Yeah, it's the Greek. Yeah. The Greek. I don't believe that. I don't. I don't think so either. I know yeah. everybody tries to say that, but I don't think so because there was one guy in. I can't remember his name, but he wrote a book about Egyptology, and he was not an e he was not any kind of scholar or anything, but he tried to tie um, Jesus to uh, Horus and all that stuff down there, and everybody took it and ran with it, and then the stories didn't even line up correctly, because when I ran into that when I first became a believer, and all my ex Wiccan people were. Coming down with, oh, you need to read this because it proves he's not real, blah, blah, you know. And that's where most of that came from was that one writer. And when I researched that out, it did not line up. I remember doing that. I don't know what I did with that research because that was, oh gosh, 12 years ago. But It's in that computer of yours that's loaded. Probably. <laughs> on your, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I don't think that that's what it means either, according to the stuff that I've seen, uh, that I've, even outside of this, um, they always say it's Zeus and all this other stuff, and I, and I don't see it. Is that all the questions? It is. I'll... Dan, I'm sorry to you too for adding you into that joke. I think that well, emotion, I, emotions got high, <laughs> but I, I think, I think it, we still did fine. It's fine. I think first impressions is, is everything. And like, this is my, probably my first time meeting Magnum. If, if I met him before, I don't know. And, uh, man, the dude wouldn't let me talk. I mean, the, and the dude wouldn't answer questions directly. I mean, it was just, it's frustrating. It was just going away. It was going away from what we even were talking about. So it was kind of, and, and it's okay to have questions and stuff, but it was, Really for trying to direct us somewhere else. But yeah, for a long time. He didn't and, have any mm -hmm. questions. I, I was, what, I, what I heard was Christ consciousness because what he was talking about was our thoughts create our reality. And that's what they talk about. Basically, in and I was trying to get to the bottom line. I was, you and know. That, so it was, to me, it was, it, I, I'm not really sure. Like I listened to the whole thing and I was trying to stay up in the chat, but it was just going in circles and wasn't like, I'm not really, even after he was up here, what does he believe? I don't really know what he believes. Um, you know, does he even believe in the father and Jesus Barava? And cause that's not where he was going. Well, so. he doesn't believe in the two Jesuses because I asked him that and he said, well, I've heard of it, but and I was yeah, trying to get he, that doesn't believe that. Right. he was the one that brought it up to me. If well, he helps. doesn't believe in the, he doesn't believe in the two Jesuses because I asked him. He brought him, it up to me. He, he's lying then. Well, he told whether me. he is or not, it doesn't Not everybody's going to get that. Not, not everybody's going to yeah. get that. This yeah. is so far in depth. Like, we, we've we got to remember, man. Like, it, it, the two Jesuses I, is so far yes, into Yes, I do remember. This. Like, it, I do this remember is, that, to he, Megan. Yeah, yeah, That's I, not I what mean, I was going with anyways. I was going with the fact that he, I asked him this question, do you believe in the two Jesuses? And he 
said, no, I have heard of it. Yeah. But no. So I, I wasn't just, I wasn't like getting angry because he, whatever, it doesn't matter, JP. The whole point is, is I wasn't well, saying me, anything though. about his character of not like of anything. I was just saying that's where he was. That's what he told us. I was just stating what he You're said. Saying the fact. And we can't, why are we wrong for stating facts, dog? Like, this is getting silly. It's called, it's it's free free speech. And and if we feel some type of way, we should be able to say it. And if I feel like someone did me wrong, I should be able to say, hey, you're doing me wrong right now, brother. You know, uh, and when Ellen was talking to him, she brought up something. And uh, I think it was Ellen at least. And, um, or maybe it was Sally. But, he was trying to play you on the hit me on the side and, and and we could you know i'll i'll, I'll if you want jp you just testify. did it again you just I mean, interrupted I what Tim was going to say so here's all i just wanted to say this Alain. it's not like we won't let you talk then it's not like we won't let you talk i mean that's no we let the guy talk for like 10 15 minutes I know. I, all I'm saying is, if you guys would talk to me on the side, oh, maybe you guys would understand where it's coming from. We can, and we will. We do. We probably will. We'll do that. You could have said it after I was talking to respect your brother. You so-called love. Oh, uh, please forgive me, Tim. Bro. I do. Come on. Bro. Especially since you asked, I do. Listen, I gotta point it out, we JP. All, we've all been JP. We gotta point it out. To interrupt at times. It's not oh, about tit for tat. I it? still haven't said my thought. All right. I'll, I'll, okay, I'm gonna jump. <laughs> Good idea. All right, thank you. No problem. <laughs> we got to be allowed to point things out and say facts. I, like, it's like I, yeah. I be losing my thoughts so much, letting people cut me off. <laughs> I think people like seriously need to like have a little notepad beside them so that you can actually finish your, your sentence. Yes, you want to say something, just write it down quickly. And Alain, then you can I get even, back to it. I even started no, making I'm not a notepad. Talking about you. No, I know, but yeah. remember, remember I told yeah. you I'm starting to write my notes down so I'm not interrupting people while I'm trying to get my little I know, thoughts and I've out. I've seen Squeeze a huge it. difference with that. I've seen and, a huge uh, difference with that. I mean, I wish people would be more respectful when they come up and not cut people off. That's not right. Exactly. You let the man talk for 15 minutes, and then when I try to speak, I get I can't finish the sentence, and I just for calling that out, I'm I'm the bad guy. Well, That's okay. Well, was, I'm gonna be the bad you're guy. You're not a bad guy. Longer than 15 minutes. It was longer than 15. It was almost a half hour. Yeah, and I gave him the benefit of the doubt. Is there, if that's yeah. what being bad is, the scripture says good is evil, and evil is going to be good. Okay, I'm the bad guy then. I just, I just wish he had gotten to, I, and, and with a lot of these people, I, I just want them to get to their point a little bit faster than, it's like, okay, goodness gracious, it's, it's a half hour. I, I do want you to get to where it's to the going. Point. What's yeah. the bottom line? And that's yeah, all like, I was it, trying to do. Because it's like, we just let them go on and on and on and on. And it's like, okay, 20, 30 minutes, people got to listen to all this. Yeah, he didn't have a point exactly, Tracy. Well, yeah, I, I, I was trying to get him to that too. And I, I was trying to just coast him along i was trying to push him along and i hope you don't think i'm trying to be defined because i wanted to listen to him but at the same time it's like okay if, if there isn't any bottom line here like w- what are we talking about are we just rambling i think we or? all gave him we all gave him the listening we were all listening to him we were trying to comprehend what he was saying he didn't want to hear what we had to say I was trying to understand. I was trying to understand what he was saying. So was I. We all understood. We didn't even disagree with anything besides the omnipotent thing. We understand the construct of the world, the ideas, and the, the invisible borders. We understand all right. that stuff. And that's but we understand that there's real consequences come in, that yeah. come from them, too. And, I, and all I was saying is I don't, we don't ignore that. And then when we got to the whole Yahweh being omnipotent and the government being Yahweh, I was like, to me, that's silly. Because, you know, a government can't fall out of heaven. Simple as that. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, I digress. JP, I love you, brother. I still love you. I know we might be upset right now. I, I went to fist fights with my own real blood brothers, and I still love them to this day. So the sofa guy has something to say in the chat. I know. Sofa, you want to come up real quick? Maybe he does. We already got got into a little scuffle. Might as well get into another one, huh? Instead of spraying them out. Oh, no, 
No, <laughs> no, 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 no. He seemed like he's upset. I don't worship anything. I just walk with power. Okay, brother. I hope you come back on the next one. So fucking. <laughs> Marie, did you have something to say? No, no. I was just, I was just gonna say that he, he just kept going around in circles to no point, and it deviated from, you know, yeah. from the conversations we were having. To me, it was just a distraction. Because it's just eventually it just came to nothing and it kept going for so long and that's why I was more frustrated because it was just going to nothing. To me, it just came random. It just came in. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like he came in and at first I was confused. To be honest, like I was so confused at first and then I got what he was trying to say. But it was like he kept going and to me it came in as a distraction because it deviated from whatever we were talking about originally or even the subjects that we're trying to speak of you know well why speak about something if we're not trying to get to a a point or a bottom line right i'm not gonna go up to someone that believe in jesus and be like hey you know (laughs) you know jesus right and that's what i'm saying like i was agreeing with that like agreeing with you because at the end of the day it's like i was like does he even believe in jesus does he believe in the father like it, it came to a point that it's like okay why are we even having this conversation what's the point yeah vita do, do like, have a question like i know like i know you try to understand people which is good but sometimes i think like when you give them the benefit of that right it keeps going for so long and then there's just no point and they go on 30 minutes 40 minutes you know yeah that's what i'm saying no point i, I used to work with a guy that he'll just he'll just talk about things that we all know all day and he he would drag it out like it's a long story, and then at the end you realize there was nothing of substance the whole time. Like, you know, <laughs> you already right, knew so two plus uh, two was four. It's like dang. Same with new age. Right. Oh, go ahead, Arnold. Right. Uh, Vita has a question. She wants to know if we believe that Abba Father knows everything from the beginning to the end. I do. Yeah. I, I think he does. I think a synonymous <laughs> word for life is destiny. You know, like when you say life happened to mm-hmm. me. Oh, that's life. Oh, that's destiny. You know. So I think he knows. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it is written that who said that anyways? Where or was where was that in the beginning of the Bible? It says that he knew the end from the beginning. Uh, I don't know who. Uh, that's in Isaiah. That's in Isaiah. Where? Isaiah. Okay. Yeah. That's Old Testament. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I do still believe that he knew. He knows everything. I do too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, maybe they're trying to get Yahweh to. And think that we that he's the same. He is a liar, but he's a liar. Exactly. He's That's a fraud. Got to keep remember. He wants to be father. She wants, she wants to, be to, be she wants to, to come up. I'm trying to invite her, but I can't find the thing on there to invite her. Invite her. Where are you, Vita? Uh, I can't find I her. I can't either. find her okay. name. That's, I just told her. I got it. I've got it. I found cool. it. Okay. <laughs> hey, Vita. Hello. Hey, Vita, how Hi. you doing? I'm good. How are you guys? <laughs> doing pretty good. Um, hey, that's great. I love it. <laughs> um, I um, when you guys were talking about the beginning, I actually remembered when I was reading the Bible to myself, and you know how in the in the Garden of Eve when this God was looking, when Adam and Eve ate the spot, Eve ate the apple and then gave it to Adam. And then God was looking for Adam and they were hiding. And this, I, I don't believe that that was our father. I believe that that was Yahweh because why would Adam and Eve hide? And then God was looking for them. Like, wouldn't God know that they were hiding? Exactly. I was going to bring that up as well. Yahweh, his, his uh, artist, you brought up that his footprints was in the, they heard his footsteps. And I was like, wouldn't, wouldn't the real creator, if he's uh, omnipotent, he would know where they are already? Why would he be asking yes. questions like, where is your brother? And, you know, stuff like that. And then, they're, and, they're, and they're like, well, we are naked. And, and he's like, well, who told you you were naked? Or like, he didn't know they were naked or he didn't know that they ate the, uh, the apple. Like that he was like that a trigger. Man. Yeah, that was just a trigger to me. Like that's not our father. <laughs> um, yeah, cause I was actually watching this one of the video too. I don't know if you guys know him. I, uh, what was his name? Um, Oh, something Anderson or Ange Anderson. Israel. 
Isaiah Israel, Anderson? Israel, yes. And he was talking about the two gardens and the snake, or was it, yeah, two gardens and the snake. And he was saying that the snake was actually Abba, like saying, well, you know, the fruit of knowledge is good and evil. Like, I don't know. I don't know if that one's true, but that part when he was looking for Adam and Eve, I don't believe that was our father. Me either. Yeah. What do you guys think? I think I think the panel agrees with that because it says the Lord in that part. Yeah, his his voice has not been heard or seen, so or yeah. he hasn't been seen. Yeah. So you wouldn't see a footstep and you wouldn't hear his voice. So Yeah. That's Thank you, like, Vila. Like no problem. Love you guys. <laughs> oh, did you have another question? Go ahead. No, no, no. That, that was it. Just wanted to point that out because I had this feeling. I, I just wanted to know if, if, if we're in the same, you know, this, like the level part. Because I was like, yeah, no, that's not our God. That's not our, oh, sorry, that's not our Abba Father. That's not him. It can't be him. And then now I just got 1,000 confirmation from you guys. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yes, I love you. Keep up the good love work. You too, Rita. <laughs> oh, we love you too, Bye, Vita. Guys. Thanks for coming up. No problem. Vita, you just straight up turned my spirit. I was still upset, and now I'm I'm completely the other way now. Thank you, Vita. She's just so sweet. <laughs> she is. Yeah. Oh, no problem. And much love to all you. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have questions? We're going to get another 20 questions if we wait three days between lives again. That was. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, guys. I couldn't be helped. Oh, no. I'm glad you're feeling better. No. Well, I had the computer issues. And then my head so going to now. On there. <laughs> What's that, Tim? <laughs> I was joking about my headphone issues when it's not even, it wasn't even an issue. Oh yeah. 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 You're really good at computers. <laughs> <laughs> Dang man. Embarrassing. Yeah. I need to act my it age. Happens. Don't I? It happens to all of us. <laughs> uh, guys, I think I'm going to call it for here to, for tonight. Cause it's, it's almost 10. Okay. <sighs> yeah. Sorry if I rub anybody the wrong way of getting upset again. Oh, no, no, no. No, no Tim. I'm okay. Tim, I, I, right. I, yeah. I have right. a thing with people like getting upset or these ones that will come in with these low voices and then keep lowering their voices and then tell you, you know, that you're getting upset. You're not getting upset. Your voice is different, first of all. Second of all, you have passion in your voice. Third, he wasn't letting you have a chance to speak. So what did he think your voice was going to do? Yeah, I know. Like, Quiet down you know, and so I can be heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway. Hey guys, I, 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 just, I, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think it was a good night, though, really. It was a good, I mean, even with that, you know, it was still a good uh, live, so. I think so, too. Well, We've had some really yeah. good ones. Yeah, I think so. And I'm showing 35.6 thousand likes. What about y'all? Me, too. Same here. Just yep, making same. sure TikTok is on on point with us. Yeah, TikTok. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, <it> looks good. <laughs> love all you guys in the chat. I love you guys too. Y'all have a good evening. Hey, Steve, Dorothy, oh, Tracy, okay. all Night, you guys. everybody. Love Night, Jim Bob. <laughs> Night, Jim Bob. <laughs> good night. Nice.